Hello friends, I'm Nishik and in this video I'll teach you how to create a professional and beautiful online course website or LMS website that is learning management system website with WordPress using only free resources. So we'll be creating this amazing website using a free theme, free page builder and only free LMS related plugins. Now for the design features and functionalities of this website, I have taken inspiration from the top LMS websites in the world like Udemy and Skillshare. This website has all the features and functionalities that a professional LMS website must have. In fact, it has some amazing features that even paid themes and plugins don't have. Now let me tell you about some of the core features. First of all, in this website, you can create both paid and free courses. And in these courses, you can create different types of lectures like audio lecture, video lecture, podcast, etc. Second of all, you can create different types of quizzes like true or false, fill in the blanks, single choice and multiple choice, etc. Now in this website, we'll also add the functionality of instructors, which means that if somebody wants to teach on your website and if they want to create their own course on your website, they can do that. And not only that, whenever there is a sale of the course that they have created on your website, you will get commission on every single sale made. So if you want only you can create courses or if you want you can even allow others to create courses on your website. We'll also see how to integrate different payment gateways on the website to accept payments for paid courses. And because we'll be using a page builder, creating this website is really easy and the design of the website is also amazing. We'll also make sure that this website is 100% mobile friendly, responsive, fast, safe and secure and obviously beautiful in terms of design. Now before you proceed further, before I show you how to create this website, let me show you a very quick demo of the website that you will be creating. So you get a better idea about the website that you will be creating, what is the design of the website, what features and functionalities are available in this website. And you can make your decision right at the very beginning whether you want to watch the complete tutorial or not. So first of all, let's see the home page. This is the home page, this is how your home page looks like. At top if you see, this is your simple header, at the left hand side you have your logo. Instead of this logo, obviously you can type in and you can paste in your own custom logo. Then we have a search bar, which is again a very important feature, obviously because will, people will be coming on your website to search for different courses. So if they want to search for any specific course, they can search for that. Then we have our main menu. So this is how our main menu looks like. We also have the cart icon, which will be useful when somebody adds any product or any course in the cart. We'll see that process as well. Then we have this option. We have the users option. So it will tell the username of the person and when they hover over this thing, they will see this option. They can go to all the different links and everything. If they click on dashboard, they will be redirected to their dashboard. So your users, whether they are course creator, instructor or students, they have their own custom front end dashboard. And from here, they can see the dashboard, they can control the profile, they can see the enrolled courses. So if this, if this is a student profile, they can go to enrolled courses and they can see that this person has purchase this course and they have not yet started. If they had started this course, the progress would have increased. So they can click on the start learning button and they can read the course or they can go through the course. If you want, you can even wish list different courses. For example, if you go to your home page, here you can see we have different courses. You will see at the top right corner, we have this, you know, wish list icon. If I click on this thing, this course will be added to my wish list. Let's add this course as well. Now, if I again go back to my wishlist option, if I click on wishlist, here as you can see, we have these two courses added in our wishlist. Then we can also go to reviews. So if you have, you know, added any reviews on your course, or if you have given any reviews to any course, you can see those reviews. You can see your quiz attempt. So because we'll be seeing how to create different quizzes and all, if you have attempted any quiz and all, you can see that as well. Now this thing, these menu are now related to instructor. That's, that is why you can see we have the instructor option over here. So as an instructor, what all courses you have created, now you can you know edit these courses right from here. If you want to change the pricing, if you want to add a new lecture or if you want to add a new lesson on these course in these courses, you can do that thing as well. And if you have some money, because as I said you earlier, if you're an instructor, you can come over here and you can withdraw some money. So if you are, if you're an instructor, if you have created multiple courses, and once you make some sales of these courses and once you receive some money, you can go to withdrawals and you can withdraw that money from here and you can ask them through PayPal. You can ask them, you know, you can withdraw your money through PayPal, Stripe or bank account transfer, any other option. Now, because I haven't made any sales till now, my current balance is zero. Once your balance increases, 
you can control your withdrawal preferences from here you can ask payment through bank transfer through paypal through e-check okay all these options are given to you so this is your front end dashboard if i again come back to the home page okay then we have our first section in the home page which is your hero section here we have a nice big title subtitle and two different call to action buttons now with the right hand side we have this simple image over here i'll show you there are many different websites from where you can you know download these kind of professional images for absolutely free i'll show you about those websites then if you see in the background we have this image i'll show you again in this website how you can create these kind of background images for absolutely free using free online tools we will see how to create these kind of background images then if you scroll down, you'll see this is your main section featured courses okay and you can see all the different courses and what is the level you can see this is for all levels this is for expert what is the title you know review in which category who is the author of the course you can see all those things if you click on this title you will see the single course page this is how the single course page looks like we have the review and rating at the very top then we have the title categories then we have this uh, introduction video so obviously what is this course about you can add one introduction video over here then after that we have about this course you know then what you will learn in this course then we can see the course content or the curriculum so how many sections are available so here as you can see meal planning basics is one section and under that we have uh, meal planning explained with this is a video of 17 minutes 24 seconds then we have another video of macronutrients you can also create videos you can add um, audios you can even add text or blogs or articles so here as you can see this is an article meal timing introduction then this is a quiz this is a demo quiz as you can see so you can see these icons as well this is a quiz icon this is article icon these are all different videos okay so if you see the second section here also we have two videos two articles okay so you can add all these things at the right hand side you can see this is a free course anybody can enroll in this course if you want to share this course you can do that thing as well now this is an expert level course no student have enrolled till now and the total duration of this course is four hours and when was this course last updated who is the author or, or the instructor of this course and what all things are included what all materials are included in this course so four hours on demand video four articles three downloadable resources full lifetime access all these options and if there is any prerequisites or requirements uh, before you get enrolled in this course so here as you can see no requisites so so on and for which which are the what are the target audience for this course you can read all these things from here now if, as a student if you want to enroll in this course you can just just click on this button enroll course button and after that you will now see this option you have enrolled on this date now you can start learning click on the start learning button and here as you can see this is your first course this is our first video if you want you can go ahead and watch this video and once you have watched this video you can mark it complete here at top you'll see your progress you if you scroll down here as you can see we also have some text over here so with video you can also add text you can add articles you can add audios if you want to go to next lesson you can click on this next lesson then we have few more lessons and over here we have multiple options for hosting your videos so many people ask how i can host my videos there are many different options for hosting your videos on internet some are free some are paid some are you know very affordable some are not very affordable so i'll explain you about all the different options all the different you know options that you have for hosting your videos you can host your videos on your web hosting you can host your videos on different third party websites you can even host your videos on aws which is amazon web services and i'll show you in detail how you can link those videos with aws or some other platform so we'll learn all those things in complete detail then if you see the quiz this is how a quiz look like you know you can see this is a demo quiz this is the title four questions 10 minutes time one attempt you can only have one attempt you can make it unlimited attempts you can make it for 10 attempts and what is the passing grade if you want you can skip the quiz if you want you can start the quiz if you start the quiz here as you can see this is a simple true or false question true or false question select false for correct answer this is just a dummy thing that is the reason why i have added all these things at top you can see this is the first question out of four how many attempts then after that time remaining you can also see the counter over here if you select the right answer click on uh, submit then we have multiple choice answer okay so i'm selecting these two click on submit we have also have this fill in the blanks so here maybe i'll type in lorem ipsum okay after that submit and next and then uh, we also have this option single choice that was multiple choice this is single choice if you want you can select any answer and click on submit quiz 
Then after that, once you submit the quiz, you will get this thing here, as you can see four questions, total marks seven, and I got everything correct. So my marks is 700% pass. You can see the details, click on details. You can see what was the right answer? What was the wrong answer? What you got right? What you uh, got wrong? You can see all these details. And again, let me remind you everything that you're seeing on your screen is free. Okay. This is really mind boggling. You can get all these features for absolutely free. Don't have to purchase anything at all. So this is really amazing. Few years ago, it was not possible. Today it is possible. I'll show you how you can achieve everything that you're seeing on your screen for absolutely free. Again, let's come back to our homepage. So this is your featured courses section. If you scroll down, we have this counter section, how many students or learners, how many certificates you have given, how many instructors, how many courses published. Then we have category section. If somebody wants to see only finance related courses, they can cl click on finance and they can go to that course. If they want to see only you know, philosophy related courses, art and design related courses, they can click on this thing. They will be redirected to that particular section. Then we'll also see how to create this newsletter section. And at the bottom, we have this simple footer. Then I'll also show you how we can create different types of pages. Like we have the course list page. So this is your course archive page. We'll see how to create this page. So if you have multiple courses, you can create a pagination over here and I'll show you how this thing works. Then we'll also see how to create some other pages. Like you can create your instructors page so you can showcase all your instructors on this page. Okay. And if somebody wants to become an instructor, they can click on this button and they will see a page. They can, they will see a form. They can fill in this form and they can now become an instructor. Then we have the blog page. So this is how your blog page looks like. So we'll also see how to do blogging with this uh, website. So you can create different blog posts and these blog posts will help you to generate some extra traffic through Google's search result. Then we'll see how to create the about page as well. Okay. So here, as you can see a very simple and beautiful about page. Then we'll also see how to create a subscription page. So if to, if you don't want to create uh, courses, uh, like if you don't want to have a courses like this, a very new, uh, you're selling a single course. Instead of this, you can add a subscription option and you can have a you know, free subscription. Some courses will be available in the free subscription package. Or if you want all courses, you can go with this subscription package as well. Okay. Then we have the facts section, frequently asked questions section. And after that, we also have a contact page. We'll see how to create this contact page as well. Okay. So basically we'll be covering everything from top to bottom. We won't be missing anything at all. And again, if I have not mentioned it yet, this is a hundred percent mobile and tablet friendly website. All right. So this was a very short demo of the website that you will be creating in this video. I hope you guys like the demo website. Now, if you like this demo website and if you want to create this website, make sure to watch the complete tutorial. And before you proceed further, make sure to subscribe and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss any future notifications. Now, if you like this video, give a thumbs up to this video, share it with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, whatever social media platform you use. And throughout the video, if you have any doubts, any comments, any suggestions for me, you can always leave them in the comment section below. And now let's start creating this website. All right, so now to create any kind of website, whether it's an e-commerce website, a simple blog, business website, LMS website, any kind of website, we need two basic things a domain name and a hosting account. A domain name is simply the name or the URL of your website. For example, blogdude.com, youtube.com, google.com, nayashik.com. All these things are different domain names. So we'll also have to register a domain name on the internet so that whenever someone wants to visit your website, they can simply type in this domain name in their browser URL bar and they can land on your website. Second and the most important thing is your website's hosting. Hosting is basically a server or a computer wherein your entire website is saved. So if you see this whole website, all the different pages, all the different media files, these courses, everything is saved in that server and that server is running 24 seven. So that whenever someone wants to visit your website from any particular country at any given time, they can always see your website live because your website is always up and running. Now hosting is the most important thing about your website. Because everything related to your website is directly or indirectly dependent on your hosting. So your website speed, your website's performance, the user experience on your website, your website security, and even your website's ranking in Google search results is totally dependent on your hosting. So if you've selected a good and reliable hosting, your website speed and performance will be amazing. User experience on your website will be very good. Your website will be very much secure. So for anybody to hack or attack your website, 
it will be almost impossible. And most importantly, you'll get better ranking in Google search results. And obviously, in contrast to that, if you select a cheap or crappy hosting, everything will be opposite of that. Now, there are literally thousands of different hosting providers available in the market, but unfortunately, only a handful of them are really good enough to consider. But you don't have to worry about that. I'll recommend you the most affordable and the best hosting available. So for that, you can open a new tab and type in blogdoodcom slash hostinger. In fact, you don't even have to type in this thing. This link is also given to you in the video description below. You can simply click on that link and you will be redirected to this page. Now, first of all, this is going to be the only thing that we need to purchase. Rest, everything is absolutely free. Theme, plugins, page builder, LMS plugin, everything will be absolutely free. Without hosting, we just cannot proceed further. We need a server wherein we can host our website, wherein we can host our videos and so on. So we will be using this WordPress hosting, but don't worry, this is very affordable. First of all, if you scroll down, you can see four different plans are available over here. Single WordPress, WordPress Starter, Business WordPress and WordPress Pro. And you can see the pricing is very much affordable. Now, for most of you guys, I would always recommend you to start with the WordPress Starter Package. So if you see over here, let me very quickly explain you what all you get with this plan. So first of all, with this plan, you can host or you can create up to 100 websites. So today you're creating this LMS website. Tomorrow, if you need to create another website, maybe another LMS website or another e-commerce website or some other website, you don't have to purchase a new hosting account. You can host all your websites up to 100 websites in one single plan. And with this, you also get 100 GBs of SSD storage. Now, if you see the entire size of this website, is only you know, hardly 200 or 300 MBs, nothing more than that. But here you're getting 100 GBs of SSD storage, which is more than enough. And most importantly, this is SSD storage, not the regular HDD storage. Now, SSD storage is approximately 30 to 40 times faster as compared to HDD storage, which other hostings provide. Now, if you're thinking about these courses, I'll explain you there are many different places wherein you can host your, host your courses or wherein you can host your video files for absolutely free. You can obviously host on your server. You have 100 GBs of storage, but that is not recommended. I'll explain you where you should be hosting your videos and hosting your courses. Then after that, you also get a free business email account. So instead of a regular email account like nayer at gmail.com, you can create a business email account like nayer at blogdude.com. So my website name is blogdude.com. I can create an email account with my website's name, blogdude.com. So nayer at blogdude.com will be my email address. Then we get unlimited bandwidth. So there is no upper limit on the data transfer per month, which is very important, especially for an LMS website. We also have unlimited databases. And for security, if you scroll down, you can see we have unlimited free SSL certificate and Cloudflare CDN. So if you see my demo website here, you will see this lock pad. This is your SSL certificate. So we get free unlimited SSL certificate and this will make your website secure. And especially it is very important if you're making, if you're creating any kind of website wherein you're accepting online payments. So here, as you can see, in this case, we'll be accepting online payments. So with this, for this kind of website, this is compulsory. We cannot create an, a website wherein we'll be, you know, accepting online payments without a SSL certificate. We also get free Cloudflare CDN. Then after that, we get a free domain name. So whatever domain name you want to register, for example, here, as you can see, this is my domain name, BlogDude. So whatever your domain name that you want to register, you will get that for free as well. We also get free migration. And because we are using WordPress, we have so many other WordPress related options. Like we have managed WordPress, we have WordPress acceleration. So this particular hosting plan has, you know, cache built in in the server. So your website speed and performance again, furthermore improves because of this thing. Now, whenever you come to directly hosting your you will be redirected to the web hosting. We don't want to use the web hosting. So make sure to always use the link blogdoodcom slash hostinger or you can do one thing, come over here, click on hosting and over here, make sure to always click on WordPress hosting. We want to use WordPress hosting, not the regular web hosting. Very important. Now, once you select this thing, after that, you can simply go ahead and click on this add to cart button. Now you'll be redirected to this page. Now, first of all, you will see there is some discount going on. You have this countdown at the top. 16 hours and something left and that is the reason why you see all these you know all these plans are available at the same price okay normally what happens is the higher billing cycle you select the better discount you will get so here is as you can see if you select for 12 months 
you will get for first year you will get this hosting for just two seventy nine two dollars seventy nine uh, cents per month, and after one year you will have to pay the regular price. But if you select two years plan, you are getting discount for both the two years. So for the first year also you are paying two seventy nine per month, and for the second all year also you don't have to pay the regular price. You have to pay this discounted price seventy five percent discount. And obviously, if you go with even higher plan, which is very much recommended because the higher pack package or the higher billing cycle you select, the better discount you get. And even your renewal prices are discounted. For example, if you select for 12 months, most of the times what happens is hosting uh, companies give you huge discount, big discount for the first year. But when you renew on the second year, you will have to pay a very big amount. So here, as you can see, even once you renew after one year, you don't have to pay the regular price of eleven dollars. You have to pay nine dollars per month. So renewal price is also heavily discounted. And obviously, if you go with four years plan, forty-eight months plan, or two years plan, twenty-four months plan, you have to pay two dollars seventy-nine cents per month for first two years. And after two years, once you renew, you have to pay just eight dollars per month. So here, the renewal price is also discounted. So obviously, the smart thing to do is to select the highest package that you can select, okay, for two years or for four years, and it will hardly cost you anything. If you scroll down, just one fifty dollars for four complete years. Now let me let me compare this thing with some other hosting. For example, if you go with A2 hosting, you will have to pay hundred and thirty dollars for the very first year, just for one year, one thirty dollar, and here you have to pay one sixty dollar for four years, okay. So this is how you know. How much discount you are getting over here? So obviously, I would recommend you to select the highest package that you can select. Go with four years plan or at least two years plan, okay? And after that, you can scroll down, and the next option is to create your account. Now, to create your account with Hosting, you just need to enter your email address. Once you enter your email address, account will be automatically created for you. Just make sure that this email address is correct. There is no spelling mistake or anything in this email address that you are entering over here. And also make sure you have access to this email address. Then when you scroll down, you have many different payment options. You can make payment through your credit card, debit card, or your ATM card. Make payment through PayPal, Google Pay, AliPay, CoinGate. If you are watching this video from some other country, for example, if you are watching this video from India, you will get even more payment options. Like you will get net banking, uh, phone pay, PayTM, all the other different payment uh, options. Similarly, if you're watching this video from some other country, you'll get many different payment options related to your country. Now, once you see this option, after that you can click on Have a Coupon Code, and you can enter my coupon code. You will get even more discount if you enter Nayar over here, N A W Y A R. Click on Apply. Now, instead of eighty dollars, you will have to pay seventy one dollars. So you're getting ten percent additional discount. So if you select for, if you select the four years plan, now you have to pay just one forty two dollars. Now instead of six twenty two dollars, here as you can see, you're getting so much discount. So this is the one that I would highly recommend you to select. Now once you enter your payment details, click on Submit Secure Payment button. Right now, once you click on that button and once your payment is successful, you will see this option that your payment is successful, and you will now be automatically redirected to a new page. Now on this page, you have to enter your password. So you have to set some password for your Hostinger account. Just make sure that this password is a strong password. It has numbers, letters, special characters, symbols like hashtag or asterisk. You know those kind of symbols. Make sure your password is strong, and also make sure to remember this password. In fact, remember the email address that you entered in your previous step, and remember this password because that email and this password will be your login ID and login password. So whenever you want to log in to your Hostinger account. You will have to enter the email address that you have entered in your previous step, and you will have to enter this password. So make sure to remember this thing. Now, once you enter this password, after that, click on confirm, and now you will see this page. Now, this is a welcome page. This is just to say hello. We don't have any options over here. We just have this, you know, button start now button. Once you click on this button, a new process will start for you. So just click on this start now button. And now here, as you can see, we have a survey. They are asking you for whom you are creating this website for—for for yourself, for a client, for a company you work for, or for somebody else. Whatever your situation is, you can just select any option. And what kind of website you are creating—a business website, blog, portfolio, online store. Again, based on your situation, you can select any option. Now, this is just a simple survey. If you want, you can even skip this survey. You don't have to enter any details over here. This is just a simple survey. So if you want to skip this survey you will see this skip link at the very bottom of this key, uh, of the screen if you see this link 
skip link click on this link and this survey will be skipped for you then after that they will ask you to select a platform what platform you want to use wordpress woocommerce some other platform or if you want you can even migrate your website so if you already have a website created and if you already have hosting and all but if you're not happy and satisfied with the hosting with your current hosting and if you want to migrate to hostinger or if your renewal prices are very high and if you want to migrate to hostinger whatever the reason is you can select the migrate option and you can migrate for free but i will explain you the migration process later on for now i would recommend you to select this first option this wordpress option so click on this select button under wordpress then you will have to enter your email address and password now this email and password is for your wordpress dashboard now whenever you want to log into your wordpress dashboard this is the email and password that you'll have to enter so again make sure to remember this email and password as well if you want you can enter the same email and password over here as well now once you enter your email and password after that click on continue and proceed further and then you will see this page now they will recommend you few templates these are all pre-made pre-built templates we don't want that because we're creating a very different type of website so we'll again skip this thing so click on this link at the very bottom skip i don't need a template and now you will see this option now here here you have three different options claim a free domain buy a domain or use an existing domain as i said you in the beginning you will be getting a free domain name you can register your domain name whatever domain name you want you can register it for free so if you want to get your free domain click on this select button under claim a free domain and type in whatever domain name you want to register for example if i want to register this domain name nayar sheik dot go dot in so i'll enter nayar sheik over here and from right hand side domain name extension list i can select dot com dot net dot shop dot store dot co dot in dot help whatever domain name extension you want so in this case let's select nayar sheik dot co dot in so once you select your domain name extension click on search now this will search whether this domain name is available or not if it is available you'll get this message that this domain is available you can now click on continue and proceed further now there are some people who already have a domain name who already have registered that domain name on some other website maybe on godaddy namecheap or some other website and maybe if you want to use that domain name with hostinger you can select this the third option use an existing domain so you can click on this select button and after that you can enter that domain name for example there is this domain name blog dude that i have already registered on godaddy maybe i want to use that domain name with this hostinger account so I'll do one thing. I'll enter that domain name over here, blog dude, and after that I'll click on continue. Now once you click on continue, you will see this page here. They will tell you where your domain name is hosted and what is your current name server. We don't have to do anything over here. We just have to click on this continue button and again proceed further. Now finally you will see this page here. They will show you that your what is your current server location. So my server location because I'm from India, it is Asia. If you want, you can change this thing to. Some other data center location in Europe, in USA, in some other country, whatever you want, you can select this option. So, so many different data center locations locations are available. I don't want to change it, so I'll just leave it as it is. And once you're done with this thing, finally click on this finish setup button. Now, once you click on this button, a new process will start for you. Now, basically, what is happening right now is WordPress is getting installed on your domain name. So this is a very small process, hardly takes around two to three minutes. So let's wait. All right, so here as you can see, WordPress is now successfully installed. And now once that is done, you'll see this page. We have some options. We don't have to use any one of these options. Just click on this Hostinger logo at top. Click on this logo. You will be redirected to your Edge panel. And this is how your Edge panel will look like. Here, if you see, we have so many different options. First thing that I would recommend you to do is click on Hosting. And under Hosting, you will see, you will see your domain name that you have registered, that you have selected. So I selected this domain, BlockDude. So that is the reason why I see this domain name over here. Now what you have to do is you just have to click on this manage. And if you have uh, there are two options, first of all, if you have just registered a free domain name, you don't have to do anything. Just click on WordPress dashboard. And the second option is that you have registered your domain name outside a uh, hostinger, maybe on GoDaddy or Namecheap. And if you're using it with hostinger, there is one extra step that you have to do, but I'll explain you that thing later on. First, let's see this page. So here, as you can see, WordPress is installed on this domain name. Now, what you have to do is if SSL certificate most of the times is automatically installed. If it is not automatically installed for you, you can just click on this install button, click on install SSL and SSL certificate will be installed on your domain name. Again, I'm saying this is just an automatic process, but still 
If it is not installed for you automatically, you can just click on this button and install it. Here you can see your database name. You can see what is the current PHP version and WordPress version that is used on your website. And make sure this light speed uh, thing is on. Okay, make sure this is on. And once your SSL certificate is installed, after that also make sure this first option is on. Force HTTPS should also be on, but installation is in progress, so we have to wait some time. Okay, now here as you can see SSL certificate is now active and you will see this thing will automatically be turned on force HTTPS. Now you just have to do one thing, click on edit website and you will see this page. Okay, now you will be automatically redirected to your WordPress dashboard. In fact, you will automatically be logged into your WordPress dashboard. Now if you don't see this page, if you see a blank page, that means that your WordPress, your domain name is not yet linked with your hosting account. So don't worry, wait for some time. Let me first complete and uh, complete this process, show you this thing. And after that, I'll show you how you can link your domain name with this hosting account. Now, first of all, once you come to your dashboard, you have to click on this WordPress icon, come back to your main dashboard, which is this thing. Okay, this is your main dashboard. Now this page, this dashboard page is the most important page of your website because from this page, you will be controlling everything on your website. So you'll be controlling your courses, your payments, your management, your pages, posts, everything will be done from here. And whenever you want to log into this page or whenever you want to land on this page, you just have to enter your domain name. And after that, put a forward slash WP hyphen admin, you will land on this page. Now there are two ways of doing it. First is you can enter your domain name. After that, put a forward slash WP hyphen admin, you'll land on your dashboard. But for example, if sometimes in future, if you forget your you know, domain, if you forget your username and password or your email or password, you can always come back to your edge panel, click on this edit website button, you will automatically be logged into your WordPress dashboard. Okay. Now, whenever we install WordPress on a new domain name, there are a few basic things that we have to understand and there are a few basic settings that we have to do. So let's first see them. So first of all, we don't, we have so many different widgets over here. We don't want these uh, widgets. So you can get rid of that. You can click on screen option. And you can untick everything from here. Okay. Now we have a nice clean option over here. Then at the left hand side, next option is your post option. Now under post option, you will see one blog post. Hello world is automatically created for you. This is just a dummy blog post. We'll later on delete this thing and create our own custom blog post. Like we have created on our blog page. Then after that, you will see the media file or media option under media option, whatever media files, whatever images, videos, whatever you have you know, uh, uploaded on your website, you will see all those media options under media library. Then we have the pages option under pages, whatever pages you are creating pages, you know, all these pages, blog page, about page, all these pages we will be creating all these pages from here. We'll see how to do that later on in the video. Then we have the comment section. Now, whenever there is any comment on any course or any blog post, you'll always see those comments over here. You can approve them, unapprove them, reply them. You can even delete or mark them spam. Then leave all the other option and click on appearance. And now under appearance, you will see few themes will be installed for you. And one of those themes will be activated. So in this case, 2023 theme is activated. Now, if I open my website in a new tab, lms3.blog dude, here you can see this is how your website will look like based on the year you're watching. This thing will look a little bit different, but this will look very simple, very plain. And now this design and this appearance of your website is because of this theme, 2023 theme. If we just go ahead and activate some other theme, maybe for example, let's go ahead and activate the 2022 theme. Click on this activate button. Again, if you come back to this page and refresh it, you'll see your website design is completely changed. And this is because of this theme, 2022 theme. So you can see a theme is basically the design or appearance of your website. Whenever you want to change the design or appearance of your website or the style of your website, you can always install a new theme or you can always install and activate a new theme. We just need one theme installed and activated. So all these extra themes, we can just click on that and delete it. So to delete it at the bottom right corner, you'll see the delete button, select that button okay, and delete this theme. Now we won't be using this 2022 or 2023 theme. We'll be using another theme that is also absolutely free theme, but that is a much better theme, which uh, with so much better design here, as you can see, and especially it is made for LMS online course website. So that is the theme that we'll be using. Now we have the plugins option. Now we have just seen what a theme is. Theme is basically the design or appearance of your website. Now, what is a plugin? A plugin is kind of a software or an add on that will add some extra features and functionalities to your WordPress website. For example, right now your website is just a simple blog. You can create different blog posts on your website, but you cannot do anything else. 
Now we want to create an online course website. To create an online course website, you'll have to add new plugins and those plugins will add all the LMS related features to your WordPress website. Similarly, if you want to accept payments on your website, for example, if you want to accept this payment on your website, for that also we'll have to add some extra plugins and those plugins will add all the payment related features to our WordPress website. Okay, so this is basically related to uh, features and functionalities. Now here, these are all the uh, plugins that we don't need most of them. So we can act deactivate all these plugins and we can go ahead and delete them. So instead of doing it one by one, we can just select this option. This way, this will tick mark everything under bulk action, select delete and just untick this thing, light speed cache. We, ne we need this plugin, but we'll activate this plugin at the end of the video. This is the caching plugin. This is to improve your website speed and performance. So instead of uh, just deselect the light speed uh, cache plugin, rest all the plugins should be selected. And then after that, select the delete option, click on apply and delete all these plugins from here. Now we have the settings option, click on settings. First of all, you have to give your website some title, basically give your website some name. Um, it could be your company's name, your brand name, uh, your if it is a personal website, it could be your name. Okay, so basically just give some title to your website. Now under tagline, you can you know, describe your website in few words. So I'll just type in WordPress related, related online courses. Okay, or maybe I'll type in best WordPress online courses. Okay, then after that, make sure to tick mark this thing membership anyone can register so that people can come on your website, they can register as a student or as an instructor, so very important. So make sure anyone can register is tick mark. Then after that, select the time zone. So based on your country, you can select the time zone. So for India, you can select Kolkata. For some other country, you can select the time zone for that and click on save changes. Now under settings, click on permalinks and over here, make sure to select the post name permalink structure. Okay. If some other permalink structure is selected, just uh, select the post name permalink structure. Go ahead and click on save changes. Again, come back to your dashboard. Now with this, all the basic settings related to your WordPress websites are now 100% completed. Now again, come back to your dashboard. Now, as I said earlier, with this plan, you can host up to 100 websites. Now, let me explain you what um, what happens in future if you want to add maybe one more website on this hosting, how you can do that. And plus, I, I also have to show you one more thing. If your domain name is registered on some other website outside Hostinger, maybe on GoDaddy or Namecheap or Namebright or any other website, and how you can link that domain with Hostinger. Let's see both these options. Then after that, you can also see, you can also select the migration option. So if you click on websites here, you will see this option, create or migrate a website. Click on this option. Now first, let's see the migrate option. That is a very simple option. If you already have a website with some hosting, if you want to migrate to Hostinger, you can select migrate my website, click on select and you can select upload website or transfer website. You should be selecting transfer website. You can select use a uh, WordPress login. So in this case, what happens is you can give them your WordPress uh, dashboard link, your username, WordPress username and password. They will go to your WordPress website. They will uh, link your, they will basically transfer your website from your current hosting to Hostinger. Okay. Let me come back. Now, if you want to add a new website or new domain, you can click on this button again, create or migrate a website. But this time, instead of migrate my website, you have to select create a new website. Click on select. Now we want to use WordPress. So select WordPress and click on select. Now we will be seeing the same process that we have just seen while installing WordPress. So you have to select some password and email and password for your WordPress account. Click on continue. Then after that, they will recommend you a few plugins. We don't need these plugins, so we can skip this thing. Click on skip. Again, they will recommend you a few templates. Don't need it, so click on skip. Now we selected claim a free domain earlier. This time you have to select use an existing domain. Now again, I'm saying this is for those people who already have registered their domain name outside Hostinger on any other website and if they want to use it with Hostinger. I'll explain you how you can link your domain name with Hostinger. So you first of all, click on select, then enter your domain name. For example, there is this domain name nayashik.com that I have registered on GoDaddy. And I, maybe I want to use this thing with Hostinger. So I can enter this domain name nayashik.com, click on continue. And after that, this will tell me, next step, it will tell me where this domain name is hosted. So here, as you can see, this domain name is registered on GoDaddy. And this is my existing name server. What I have to do is I have to change these name servers to these name servers. Okay. I have to replace them with these new name servers. So let's do that. Go to wherever your domain name is registered. So in this case, I'll go to GoDaddy. Now log into your account. 
Now, whatever option you're using, whether you're using GoDaddy, whether you're using Namebright, Namecheap, however, whatever option you're using, you'll always see the DNS option. Okay, so besides your domain name, for example, in this case, I'm using nayashik.com. Besides this, you will always see the DNS option. Click on DNS. DNS stands for Domain Name Server. So basically, we have to change the name server of our domain. Now, if you scroll down, you will see Custom Name Server. Yes, we want to use Custom Name Server. Click on Change. And if they, if they ask you this thing, select this second, this, this option at the bottom, enter my own name servers. Now we, you will basically just see two lines. You have to delete these two name servers. Come back to your website, copy this name server number one, come over here, paste it under name server number one. Similarly, copy your name server number two and paste it under line, uh, paste it under line two and click on save. Now, once you click on save, it can take up to 24 hours to link your domain name with Hostinger. So by that time you can wait and you can complete this process. Now click on continue and click on finish setup. Now again, WordPress is getting installed on this new domain name, nayashik.com. And as you can see, this installation is now 100% completed. Now do one thing again, come back to your dashboard. Now let's do one thing, let's install all the required themes and plugins. Right now, this is how your website is looking. We need a new theme to get a design like this one. And with that, with that we'll also need all the required plugins so that we can create this LMS type of website, online course website, and we can have all these online course related features on our website. So first let's install the theme. Everything will be free, theme plugins and everything will be free. Now to install the theme, first you have to open a new tab and type in blogdude.com slash tutor. In fact, this link is also given to you in the video description below. So you can simply click on that link and you should be redirected to this page. This is the plugin that we'll be using. Uh, basically, they offer both the theme and the plugin. Tutor LMS is the main plugin for LMS for creating e-learning courses or online courses. Okay, but first we need the theme. So for the theme, you will click on this uh, link at the top themes link. Click on that. And over here, you will see Tutor Starter. This is the theme that we want. And as you can see, this is a free theme. So if you click on View Detail, you will be redirected to this page. And here you can click on Download Free. And this a new zip file will start downloading for you. And here, as you can see, this is the zip file. We have to upload this file on our website. This is the main theme. So again, if you come back to your dashboard, click on appearance, click on add new to add a new theme. Now we have to click on upload theme. Now just choose this file. Just click on, uh, you can just drag and drop it over here. You can click on choose file and select this zip file. And after that, click on install now. And once your theme is installed, you will see this option. You have to click on activate to activate this theme. Now again, if you go back to your website and refresh it, you'll see your website design is again changed because of this theme, but it still looks very simple. We'll have to design this thing. First of all, let's do one thing. Let's delete this 2022 theme. So if you click on this thing, we can now delete this theme as well and make sure to enable auto updates. Okay. Make sure to enable auto updates so that whenever there is a new update available for this theme, it will automatically be, you know, updated on your website. You don't have to do it manually. Now this theme will recommend you this Twitter or uh, Tutor Mate plugin. Okay, so you can click on begin installing plugin and you can install this Twitter Mate plugin. So click on install now. And once it is installed, uh, you will see successfully installed. And now we need the main plugin that will add all these LMS related and online course related features. So for that, again, come back to this link, click on Tutor LMS and over here, click on pricing. This is a paid plugin, but we want to use the free version. So if you click on pricing, you will see there are so many options available for agency, for business, for individual, for if you want to use it on one website, you have to purchase the individual one. But as I said earlier, we'll be using the free version. Obviously, if you go with the premium version, you can have lifetime or annual package. If you want to go with the uh, premium package, you can do that thing as well. You will get even more features with the premium package. You can scroll down and you can read about all the features that you'll get with the premium package. We want to use the free one. So we'll click on this get now button under free. And again, a new zip file will start downloading for you. Again, come back to your website, click on plugins at the left hand side. Now click on add new. And this time again, click on upload plugin and choose this file, Twitter file that you have just downloaded. So again, we'll just choose this file, click on install now. Now I don't want to activate this plugin uh, right now. I'll activate all the plugins later on. First, uh, for now, I'll just click on go to plugin installer. And if you click on plugins at the left hand side, you will see we have Tutor LMS, we have Tutor Mate. We want to activate both of them, but, but before that we need few more plugins. 
Now we need a plugin to style this thing. We have the feature plugin. This plugin will add all the features, but we need a plugin that will help us to design these pages. So basically we need a page builder that will help us to create these kind of pages. And this is also free. So for that, again, open a new tab and type in blogdoodcom slash Elementor. Again, this link is also given to you in the video description below. You don't have to type anything. Just click on that link and you should be redirected to this page. Now for Elementor as well, there is a free version and there are premium versions. So here, as you can see, first of all, they will recommend you to go with some premium version. If you want to, you can go with the essential plan. You, you can have the premium version of Elementor on one website. If you want this premium version on three websites, you can see all the different plans. We want the free version. So they have removed the free version option from here, but there is one way you can still download the free version. So you can click on the login button. And first of all, you have to create a new website. If you already have, you have to create a new account. If you already have an account, you will be automatically logged in. If you don't have an account, you, they will ask you just some email address and password. Enter any email and password, account will be created for you. Once your account is created, you can now do one thing in the URL bar. Right now it says my.elementor.com slash websites. We have to do some changes in this URL bar. So instead of this option, type in this my.elementor.com forward slash welcome forward slash auto hyphen install. As you can see on your screen, just type in this thing and press enter. And now you will see this page over here. You have to enter your website link. So this is your website link, your website name or your website link. You can enter this link and click on check for WordPress. Now they will check whether WordPress is installed on your website. If it is installed, you will get this thing and you can now click on install Elementor and you can install it. They will automatically install the plugin. If this does not work for you, you can download the zip file. Click on download it here. A zip file will be downloaded for you. And just like tutor LMS and all the other plugins, you can go ahead and download. You can install this you know, zip file on your website. The simple way to do is you can enter your website link. Click on check for WordPress. I was just explaining you that if this check for WordPress thing does not work for you, you can download the zip file as well. And now click on install Elementor. They will automatically open this thing. And here, this is the plugin we need, Elementor Website Builder. At the bottom right corner, you will see this blue install, install now button. Click on that button. And again, we don't have to activate this plugin right now. We can activate all the plugins later on. Once it is installed again, click on go to plugin installer. Now this was page builder. This will help you to design your page. Now we need few more plugins. Now another plugin that we need is to accept online payments. So if you just want to create free courses, you don't have to install this plugin that I'm going to show you right now. Or if you want to create paid courses and if you want to accept online payments on your website, you need this plugin. So for that, again, come back to this plugins option and under search plugins, search for WooCommerce. Okay. You will get this option over here. You don't have to add any, you know, open any external link. You can get this plugin from here. So under plugins, click on add new and search for WooCommerce. You will see this plugin WooCommerce by automatic install this plugin. Now don't activate it right now. We'll activate all the plugins at once. We need few more plugins from here. Now, if you search for tutor Elementor, just search for tutor Elementor, you will get one plugin. Okay. If you search for tutor Elementor, you will get this plugin tutor LMS Elementor add-ons. Click on add new. This is by Themium. Okay. Make sure you install this plugin. Tutor LMS Elementor add-ons. Okay. This will add some extra add-ons on Elementor. Then after that, we need MC4WP, MailChimp for WordPress. So just type in MC4WP. Uh, okay. This is the plugin that we need. MailChimp for WordPress. Install this one as well. Now this plugin will help you to create this, you know, newsletter form. This newsletter form is created because of this plugin. Okay. So make sure to install this as well. We can activate it later on. Now we need the contact form seven plugin. So just search for contact. You will get this plugin contact form seven, install this one as well. And this contact form seven plugin will help you to create this contact form on the contact page. So here on the contact page, you can see this is the form that we need to create. So this plugin will help you to create this form so that people can come and they can contact you through, uh, through this form. Okay. Now, once you install all these plugins, now we can click on plugins from the left hand side and we can now go ahead and activate all the plugins at once. So you can simply tick mark this thing. And I just want to uh, untick this one, Lightspeed Cache. I want to activate this plugin once I create my website. Once my website is completed, after that, I want to activate this plugin. But rest all, you can make sure to tick mark that thing. Now under bulk action, click on activate and click on apply. Now all the plugins will be activated for you. Once it is done, you will see this page. Uh, this is your setup page. This is to set up tutor LMS for your website. 
If you don't see this setup option, don't worry. This is not really important. We'll see the Twitter LMS settings later on as well. But this is just a simple setup. You can click on let's start. And for whom, uh, for what kind of website you're creating, individual or marketplace, we are creating a marketplace. Individual is basically wherein you are the only, you know, instructor, you will be, you are the only one who will be creating courses. In marketplace, other people can also come to your website and they can also create their, their courses on your website. And when there is any sale of that course, you will get your commission. So I'm selecting marketplace, click on next. Now, whether you want instructor profile option and student profile option. So if you go to this page, if you open any course, if you go to marketplace, if you open any course, you will see who the instructor is. Okay. Here, as you can see in this case, fam media is the instructor. If I click on this link, uh, you will see there is a new page for this instructor. Okay. So in this, in this page, you can see about the instructor. I have not entered anything under bio in, in bio. This instructor can, uh, add all the details, like what their qualifications are and so on. Here they can see how many courses this instructor has created, how many students, what is the average re total average review? Okay, all these things. So this is the instructor profile. We do want instructor profile. Similarly, we also want a student profile. So we want both on. Now lesson permalink will be lesson. Don't change this thing. Click on next. Uh, uh, we want question and answer. Yes, we want to allow question and answer on each course. So on every single course, there will be question and answer section at the left hand side. We want that. Similarly, we also want uh, instructor bio. So we want it on and course per row. How many courses do you want per row three or four? So if you go to the uh, course list page here, as you can see, we have three. So I'll keep it three and how many courses per page. So we have 12. So three, four, nine, 12, because I have only nine. I'm showing only nine, but basically we want to show maximum of 12 courses per page. Now click on next new sign up, whether you want to allow new sign up, people can come on your website. They can sign up as an instructor or as a student. Yes, we want to allow that. We also want to allow earning because we, whenever a new instructor comes, we want to give them maybe like 80% and we'll keep 20% or we want to give them 90% and we'll keep 10% commission. So we want to allow both this thing. Now again, click on next guest checkout. I don't recommend guest checkout because we want people to come create an account on our website. Only then they can purchase any code and any course. Okay, only then they can enroll in any course without they creating their account. They cannot do it. So make sure you don't tick mark this thing. Guest checkout sh should be off. Now, how much commission do you want and how much commission do you want to give to instructor? So by default, it is 80% instructor and 20% you website owner or admin. You can increase or decrease this thing. Maybe I'll make it 90% to the instructor, only 10% to the admin. Then after that, when this instructor has some money, how they can withdraw. So they can withdraw through bank transfer, through e-check and also through PayPal. I'll tick mark all three options. Now click on finish setup. Now again, I'm saying this was just a simple setup. We'll be seeing this, you know, tutor LMS setting in more detail. Uh, looks like this tutor mate plugin is not activated. Click on begin activating plugin. Click on activate. All right. Make sure all the plugins are activated. Come back to your dashboard. We don't want this widget. So we'll, you know, untick this widget as well. Now, this was a quick setup for Twitter LMS. If you see at the left hand side, we have Twitter LMS and here under Twitter LMS, you will see settings. Click on that. Now we have all these settings over here. First of all, if you click on pages at the left hand side, earlier we had only these two pages, privacy policy and sample page. Now these three pages are created for you. Dashboard, instructor registration and student registration because of this Twitter LMS plugin. And let's actually do one thing. Click on plugins. Okay, WooCommerce is not activated because if WooCommerce was activated, few more pages will be created for you. So make sure to click on plugins and activate uh, Twitter LMS uh, Elementor add-ons and also WooCommerce. Click on activate and make sure to activate WooCommerce plugin as well. Make sure all the plugins are activated basically. Now once you activate the WooCommerce plugin, you will get this setup. Not really important. So we can skip this setup. Click on this link. Skip a uh, store setup and click on no thanks. All right. Now again, if you click on pages now, as you can see, shop page, uh, checkout page, cart page. These pages are also automatically created for you because of this plugin, WooCommerce plugin. Now, if I, if I again go back to Twitter LMS and settings, here as you can see, dashboard page will automatically be selected for you because this page is created. You can select your terms and uh, policy page. So basically you can do one thing, go to pages. This privacy policy page is created for you, refund and uh, you know, written policy, privacy, pol privacy policy, you can edit this page. You can enter your own privacy policy and after that you can publish this page. So click on this publish button 
and after that you can select this page under your terms and conditions page so if i select this privacy policy page under terms and conditions page and enable marketplace as i said earlier we want to enable marketplace yes allow instructors to publish courses no for, for now i don't want this thing uh, but become an instructor button yes people can come they they will see a form or they will see a button if they want to become an instructor they can click on that button and a new request will come to you that this user wants to become an instructor you can you know approve or deny that request and under this option allow instructors to publish courses we we want it off so basically with this option what happens is instructor can create courses but they cannot publish it you as an admin or owner of the website will have to publish these courses not the instructor so you will first see okay what all the content is in the course and if you think everything is correct then only you can publish the course okay so make sure this is off only admin can publish the course now click on save changes now you click on course at the left hand side and student must be logged into view course make it off we don't want this option course content access allow instructors and admins to view the course uh, content without enrolling again make sure it is off content summary on auto redirect to courses not re recommended all right course retake enable this feature this will allow you know your students to reset course progress and start over so maybe we can allow this thing if somebody wants they can have this option as well now publish course review on admins approval you can enable this thing so basically with this app option what happens is as i said earlier your instructors can create courses but they cannot publish it you'll have to publish it so for example some instructor has created a course you went through all the details related to their course and if you publish that course after that whenever some uh, that instructor made make some changes in that course you can allow them you can now allow them to republish it so they don't have to ask your permission again for republishing so if you enable this thing they can republish their course if you disable this thing again for republishing also you will have to I'll approve that only then that course will be republished i don't recommend i would recommend you to just make it on so that your instructors can republish the course make wp editor for lesson on and uh, yes we can automatically load next course lesson enable lesson content very important so that in each lesson you will have uh, you will have the comment option people can comment they can ask some question if they have okay quiz related settings so when the quiz is submitted it will when the quiz time expires or when the person has answered all the quiz it will be automatically submitted now these options how many marks for how many correct answer points or default answer these these can be overwritten so not really important you can just skip it then if you scroll down preferred video source if you, we want to enable all the video sources i'll explain you about all these video sources now again make sure to save these changes click on monetization and under monetization make sure to select woocommerce and uh, automatically complete woocommerce orders you can make it on enable re revenue sharing you can make it on how much instructor takes so i'll make it 90% for instructor and 10% for admin okay and after that uh, no we don't want to deduct any fee minimum withdrawal amount so when this instructor has at least $80 in their account only then they can withdraw the money so you can have this option minimum days before balance is available make it at, uh, at least uh, make it just one okay and after that withdrawal method so this instructor can withdraw their money through bank transfer e, e check or paypal again you can go ahead and instruct you know increase or decrease these numbers for example i can just make it 50 once this instructor has 50 dollars in their account they can request for withdrawal click on save changes again design and uh, under a preferred course uh, filters first of all make sure to enable filters and you can enable all these filters okay now instructor list style okay for example i have uh, shown you this thing if you go to the instructor page this is the style for the instructor page so as you can see this is the one that is selected if you want to go with some other style maybe modern style uh, you can go with that thing as well okay rest everything looks good so click on save changes advanced leave the advanced thing for now i guess yeah leave this thing come back to general and with this we have completed the settings related to tutor lms if you don't understand any one of these settings don't worry once we start creating these courses and see all the details you will understand what these settings were for so for example if you did not understand any setting related to course don't worry or related to monetization once we see the monetization section you will understand these settings 
again we'll, we might come back we'll come back to these settings just to make sure that you understand everything properly right so now let's see how we can create different courses so to create a new course you will click on courses under tutor lms so under tutor lms you will see the very first option courses click on that you will now see this page and here to create a new course we have to click on this add new button so click on this button now let me do one thing let me open a single course page so that we can see how this course page looks like and we can just copy paste all the content over here this will save us a lot of time now there are two types of courses free course and paid course all the content and everything is same only the pricing difference is uh, there so free course is obviously free anyone can come and enroll in that course and paid courses you have to pay some money to enroll in that course so first let's see how we can create a free course now this is the course this is the title of the course this is related to diet and meal plan so this is basically the title perfect diet and meal plan complete course so i'll copy the title paste it under title over here then we have the description or the about course section so what this course is all about you can type in detail and you can see you can also make something bolder you can add a smiley face and all these things first what i'll do is i'll just copy a simple text over here okay just to show you how this works now if you want to make anything bolder for example this sentence this much is bold so if you want to make it bolder you can just select this much and select this b this will make it bolder okay now as you can see and if you want to change color for anything for example if i want to change color of this section you can select this much then you can click on toggle toolbar and you will get this text color you can change this color to red or any other color you want okay as you can see so similarly whatever you want you can do it like this maybe i want to and again select this much make it bolder so you can do all these things you can uh, you can basically use it just like microsoft word or a word document you can use all these op options you can add permalinks you can uh, add a bulleted list or numbered list you can ma make or mark something block quote you can also change the alignment of the text and so on so this is basically your description or this is some detail about the course then if you scroll down you will see you're the author who whoever is creating this course this is going to be the author then maximum if there is any maximum number of students limit that you want to set over here for example if you type in 100 only first 100 people can enroll in that course after that enrollment will be disabled but we'll type in zero for no limit if you type in zero it will be unlimited then what is the difficulty level for the course anybody you know all level or only beginner level or expert level so I'm, maybe I'm, i'll select all level and this is a public course so if you make this course public no enrollment is required anybody can come and just start the course so make sure you don't make it public course enrollment should be required so that people come create an account on your website and only then they can enroll in this course and we want to enable q a question and answer section for our course then they will ask you free course or paid course we want to select free course for now now after that you will see this option course builder okay we have to use the course builder but before that let's see let's see a few more things now at the right hand side you will see we have category so this is related to meal plan and diet so what i'll do is i'll add this category health and fitness okay so i'll click on add new category type in health and fitness and click on add new category now this category will be created and selected next time whenever you have any course related to health and fitness you can just select this category or if you have a new course related to some other category you can create a new category just like that then you can also create different uh, you know you can create different uh, you know tags over here for example meal planning could be a tag so i'll type in meal planning click on add diet planning could be a tag health could could be a tag okay then after that uh, nutrients and all those things could be different tags then we have a featured image so if you come back to the course page here as you can see this image is your featured image okay whatever image you see over here this is going to be a featured image so you can upload some image as your featured image now there is a link given in the video description below if you click on that link you will be redirected to my website blogdo.com and here for every single tutorial whenever i create a tutorial i always create a blog post for that tutorial for example for my latest tutorial how to create a you know this is related to wordpress designing masterclass how you can design wordpress how you can use elementor to design your wordpress website or any other website so whenever you click on that link in which is given in the video description you will be redirected to a similar blog post first you will see the video that you're watching right now then you will see some important links and at the bottom you will see download free images once you click on this blue download button you will download a zip file 
And once you unzip that file, a zip file is something like this. If you right click on this file and click on extract files, this file will be unzipped or this file will be extracted and you will see a media folder. Once you open this folder, inside this you can see all these images that I've used to create this website. I've given you everything for absolutely free. So let's use one of these images. So I'll click on set feature image, click on upload file, select file. And I'll select some image from here. So I'll click on media and maybe let's select this image or maybe this image. Let's select this image, click on open. So this is our featured image. I'll select this image. And after that, once it is uploaded, you will see at the right hand side bottom set featured image. Click on this button, set featured image button. Okay. All right. Now what will you learn in this course? So you can see I've added all these things, all these details over here. If you, if you see over here, what you will learn so you can add these kind of points. So this is our first point. Okay. Now, if you press enter, you will be entering your next point. Okay. So this is our next point. Okay. Then again, enter and you can uh, add few more points. So let's add the fourth point. And after that, let's add these points as well. Okay. So maybe I'll select it like this. Then after that target audience, you can see the target audience over here. Again, you can add different points in different lines. Now total course duration. So whatever the total course duration is going to be, you can add that thing or you can add, uh, you can increase or decrease the number after you create the course builder. First, we are adding all these details and at the end, we'll see the course content. First, let's see the course details. Now, what all material is included? Okay, so I have copied these things over here. I'll copy it, paste it over here. So maybe we'll be uploading four hours of on-demand video, four articles, three downloadable resources, full lifetime access. You can add all these things. Now, if there is any prerequisite for this course, if there are requirements for this course, you can add those prerequisites over here. Now, course intro. First of all, you will have to upload some intro video so that people get an idea about what this course is all about. So as, a, as you have seen in this video, or, you know, when you started watching this video at the very first, I have the introduction. So first you introduce what is going to be what the user will be learning in this course or what kind of website they will be creating in this course. OK, so that is the introduction. So if you have any intro video, you can upload that video here. Now, there are many different ways of uploading a video. Let's see from the most basic option. The most basic option is your HTML5 or MP4. Basically, in this option, what happens is you upload video files on your web server. On WordPress hosting, Hostinger that we have purchased, you upload your video files on web server. Now, this is recommended if you are going to create only two or three courses. OK, so your entire website has only two or three different courses. Then you can use this option. Then basically you can upload all these 4K or 1080p videos on your server. So let's see that option. So first of all, if you want to upload videos on your server, you can click on browse files. You can upload some file. So in the media folder only, I have given you this option. I've given you our dummy image or demo image kind of thing. OK, a simple image that you can use on your website, this sand video. So you can upload this video, click on open file. Now, once this video is uploaded, you will again uh, get this uh, button upload media. You can click on this thing and you can also add some feature image. So this image that you see on top of this, this is a featured image for this thing. So you can click on upload image and maybe I'll up upload you this image as the featured image or introduction image. Click on use this media. So all these things till now we have seen this is all related to course. So if you just go ahead and publish this thing and if you open this thing in a new tab, open this view course in a new tab, you can see we have the title, we have the category over here, we have the video, we have the image. If you play this video, this is how your video will play as you can see. All right, you can pause this video, you can you know, increase or decrease the speed of the video, you can share it with your friends and so on. Then we have this thing about course. Okay, then we have what you will learn audience, tags, requirements, materials included, all these things. Then if you scroll down, we don't have anything under course content. Now we can start building our course. So this is all information related to course. We can now go ahead and start our course builder. So first in the course builder, you select different sections. OK, so here as you can see, we have five, six different sections. And in each section, you can create different lessons. For example, this is related to dieting and meal planning. So the very first lesson, very first section is meal planning basics. And the very first lesson in that is meal planning explained. And this is a video. As you can see, we have this video icon and this is 17 minutes, 24 seconds long video. Then we have next video, then next video and so on. OK, so let's see how we can start creating this. 
a course. So first what I'll do is I'll create all the different sections like we have five, six different sections over here. So we'll click on add new topic. So topic is basically your section. So in this case, this is meal planning basics. So I'll type in meal planning basics over here. Then after that, click on add topic. Similarly, our next topic, don't click on lessons and quiz for now. Let's first add all the topics. Now click on add new topic. Next topic is supplements. Okay, so I'll add this topic over here. Supplements, click on add topic. Then our next topic is setting up your diet. So click on add new topic. All right, so click on add topic again. Then we have uh, uh, micronutrients. So let's add micronutrients. Click on add new topic. Now again, click on add topic once you have added the name. And finally, we have more dieting tips and strategies. So click on add topic and type in more dieting tips and strategies. Click on add new topic. Again, if you just go ahead and update this thing, again, come back to your course page, refresh it. Okay, uh, let's again refresh it. Here, as you can see, we have all the different sections or topics, but this is empty. So even if you click on that, nothing happens. So let's start creating different topics or let's add, start adding different lessons in that. So first we want to see the basic lesson, the video lesson. So if you click on this thing, this is going to be a video lesson. Uh, you can also add some introduction or some text with this lesson. So I'll copy the text. Click on add lesson and this is first of all, what is the lesson title? So you can see over here, your, uh, this is meal planning explained. This is the title of this lesson. Okay. So I'll copy meal planning explained and I'll paste in this title over here. Then if you want some text, okay, maybe I'll copy the text, paste it over here. All right. Then after that, if you scroll down, we have featured image. We don't want any featured image. We have the video. So, so now we have to upload your video. Now we have seen one option, we have seen HTML5 uh, MP4, how you can upload videos on your server. So if you come back to your dashboard, if you click on media, you will see that video signed video over here because this is stored on your media server. Now this is again, as I said you earlier, this thing is only recommended for those people who will be creating only one, two or maximum three courses. Okay, not more than that. But if you're planning to create more courses, like multiple courses, and if you're planning to create a marketplace, wherein many people can come and upload courses on your website, then there are other options as well. For example, you can go to some uh, other website, you can upload that video over here and you can just add that external link and this will convert that link into a video. Then we have YouTube, we have Vimeo, we have short codes, all these options. So first let's see Vimeo. Vimeo is a great option for hosting your videos. So if you go to Vimeo.com, now in Vimeo, we have a free plan, we have paid plans as well. There are different options for different people. So if you click on see plans, you can see uh, about all those plans, what all option you get, what is the monthly payment and so on. Okay. So you can see about all these things. There is a free version as well. If so, if you want, you can just start with the free version. I already have an account with Vimeo. So I'll just log in with this account. And now let me upload this video. Let me show you how this works. Right, so here to create a new video or to add or upload your new video, you can just click on new video and you can upload. For example, let me upload this sand video over here. So you can just upload this video and here as you can see the uh, progress at the bottom right corner of my screen. Now once your video is uploaded, you can go ahead and upload, you can go ahead and select this thing. So here as you can see, once it is uploaded, this is getting, a pro this is pro getting processed now. It says video completed. If you click on this video, here as you can see, it is optimizing. Once the optimization and everything is completed, you can get the video link from here. So if you click on share link, okay, this is, uh, this is the video link, okay? So you can click on this copy thing and this link will be copied. Then you can come over here, paste in this link. Okay. And as you can see, as soon as you paste in this link, this will automatically, you know, get the timer from that. So this is 14 seconds long video. So it automatically got the time from that thing. So for more videos, if you have multiple videos, if you're planning to create like many different courses, and if you have multiple 4k videos, all those things, then I would highly recommend you to upload your videos on some external source. For example, in this case, we have seen how you can upload this video on Vimeo. Then you can just copy the link and you can paste in this link and this will show the video. So we have seen HTML5 and this is going to be Vimeo. So first let me click on update lesson and this video is now uploaded. So till now we have seen two options, HTML5 that is uploading your video on your server. Then we have seen Vimeo. Let's see a few more options. Now if you click on lesson, let's add a new lesson and let's add this lesson, micronutrients explained. So I'll type in the title over here, micronutrients explained. And once you have typed, uh, typed in the title after that, if you again want to add some 
uh, content for this thing then we have the video option now if you want you can go to some other website you can embed any video if you have uh, some video is uploaded on some other website and if there if the embedding option is available you can just uh, embed the video as well for example uh, this video is uploaded you can even embed this video so embedding option is available in many different websites so if you want you can embed the video as well then if you have if you have this option as well we have the external url let's see how we can use the external url so for this case we'll be using amazon web services let's see let's see how we can integrate amazon web services with this website and how we can upload our videos on amazon web services aws so first of all go to uh, just go to google first and over here search for aws s3 okay if you search for this uh, open this link amazon s3 cloud uh, object thing that you see over here now this is you know this server is for data storage so you can store your data over here and after that you can link that data to your website okay so this is very cheap option if you if you click on this option let's see the pricing option here we have pricing option if you see the pricing option this is amazon web services is for people who have a big amount of data like you have huge amount of data here as you can see the basic plan starts at 50 G, 50 tbs okay 50 terabytes so if you have many if you have hundreds of different uh, courses if you have hundreds of different courses and all 4k files and all so on so on and so forth then you can use amazon web services this will be very cost effective and cost efficient for you so it will only cost you 2 cents 2.3 cents basically per gb and if your data requirement increases your price will keep on decreasing okay so this as you can see very cheap so we can click on get started for free create an account with amazon web services i already have an account so i'll just sign in to my console but now once you log into your account you have to click on services at the top left corner you can see over here and from here select s3 and now you have to create different buckets so to create a new bucket you will click on create bucket and basically a bucket could be for a particular course so we are creating this course over here i'll again come back perfect diet and meal plan complete course this is our course name so i'll create a bucket with this name and here as you can see bucket name must be globally unique and must not contain spaces or uppercase letters so first of all i'll type in this thing and i'll remove all these spaces and uppercase letters so instead of these spaces i'm using a hyphen if you want you can use a dash as well now aws region where you want your server you can select your server location uh, wherever you want okay then after that uh, uh, this is recommended which is fine a uh, bucket versioning is disabled and uh, click on advanced settings rest everything looks good all right rest everything looks good just click on create bucket all right now as you can see a uh, bucket successfully created you will see this name over here perfect diet meal plan complete course you have to click on this thing and now we can go ahead and create a folder for example if you want to create a folder inside this thing for different maybe for different sections or for different topics for meal planning basics you can create a folder and in that folder you can add all these things so maybe let's do that let's create uh, a new folder and we'll type in meal planning okay maybe i'll type in this thing click on create folder now inside this folder click on this folder now inside this folder i want to upload some videos so i'll click on upload video and after that you can drag and drop the video here or if you want you can just click on add files and select that file now in this case again if you want to select this video or any other video you can just upload that video just like that and after that uh, this is going to be a destination destination detail all right so uh, everything looks good permission properties standard which is fine all right now you can just go ahead and upload this video and once it is uploaded you will get the video link Alright, so here as you can see this is uploaded you can see uh, this is your video over here if you click on this video okay or if you want you can click on open this will open the video for you you will see how this video will look like okay so here as you can see this is your video i'll pause this thing now this video that you you have opened this is your video link okay this is a video and you you'll get your link over here at the top you can copy the link from here this is your video link come back make sure you have selected external url and paste in this video and again for this as well as soon as you paste in the link the video size and everything will be automatically copied over here now you can again go ahead and click on update lesson and this thing is, is also created so we have seen all these options we have seen amazon web services uh, your own uh, you know web hosting server we have seen vimeo 
Now I'll tell you what I recommend. The option that I really recommend, I think is the best option. It's absolutely 110% free. You don't have to pay anything, do no problem at all. Okay, so that is the option that I'll be recommending. And you now the best option to process your videos, even if you have large videos, 4K videos, it will process it properly and it will display properly on your website. And that option is YouTube unlisted videos. Yeah, you heard it right. It is YouTube's unlisted videos. So once you unlist a video on or once you upload your video on YouTube and if you unlist it, nobody will be able to watch that video. Only people who have the link, exact link of the video, only they will be able to watch that video. So you can use this thing on your website and your webs your video will be very much secure and processing your video will also be very easy and your videos will not have any playback issues and anything like that because obviously it is hosted on YouTube. So even if you have an 8K video file, you still won't have any problem at all. So let's see how that is done. So to create or to upload a video or to create a new unlisted video, you just go to YouTube, create an account, click on create, click on upload video and just upload that video. Whatever video you have, however long videos you have, you can just click on select files. Again, I'll for just, just for demo purposes, I'll be uploading this sand video, dummy video, just for demo purposes. All right, so now you can delete all the description. We don't need the description. Just change the title, whatever title you want. No need to add any thumbnail or anything. Uh, just make sure it is selected, not made for kids. And rest everything is fine. Once you have, once you upload this video, here's you can see update uh, completed, upload completed, processing is starting. And this will hardly take some time because this is a very small video. Now you already get your video link. This is your video link, but check completed. Now I'll click on next. Make sure you select no monetization. Okay, so that they don't see any ads on your videos. We don't want that. Click on next. Again, next. No copyright issues. Click on next. And here you have to make sure that you select unlisted option. Okay, not private not members only, not public, unlisted. Okay, only people with your link, with the video link can watch the video as you can see. So make sure you have selected unlisted and you can copy the video link and click on save. Now link that you have copied, you can come over here, click on new lesson and you can paste in this video link over here. So you can select YouTube from here, paste in the video link and this is, this will work with YouTube as well. Okay. Okay. I'll add this title. How much protein should you consume per day? Maybe this was the title. Okay. So I'll paste in the title and click on update lesson. And this is the most recommended option. According to me, in my very humble opinion, I would highly recommend you to use YouTube unlisted video, best option of all. But obviously if you want to go with Amazon web services or Vimeo or any other platform, you can easily go with any other website. Always you can use the external URL thing. Just copy your video URL and you can paste it under this option and it will start working for you. So we have seen the video related things. Now we can also create articles, audio and also quizzes. So let's see how we can create these kind of lessons. Now, first of all, again, click on this add lesson button. Now, what kind of lesson again? First of all, we'll do one thing. Uh, I'll copy the time. I'll copy the title meal timing introduction. Now, this is a simple article as you can see. So if you click on this thing, you will see this is a simple article and this is the same text. So I'll just copy the text and paste it over here. You, if you want, you can even add images in between. If you increase this thing, if you want to add images in between, you can just press enter, click on add media and you can upload some media file or image file or whatever, whatever file you want. So maybe I'll upload this image in between, select this image, click on insert into post, All right? And select align center and edit this thing. And we can even make it full size, click on update, full size image. Okay. So you can add images, you can change the color and all these things from here. Now this is a simple article, so we don't have to add the video source. So make sure to uh, just select this option, select video source. Basically we are not selecting any video, so we'll select select video source. All right, rest everything is fine. Just click on update lesson. So this was article thing. If you want to create an article lesson. Now let's see how we can create a quiz. So if you again come back, you can see this is a demo quiz. So I'll copy the title, click on Instead of lesson, now we'll click on add quiz and we'll type in the title quiz title. This is a demo quiz. Click on save and next. Now we can add different questions. So first we'll click on add question. Now, as you can see, we have true or false, single choice, multiple choice, open ended and fill in the blanks. We have some more short answer, image matching, uh, matching, ordering, image answering. These are all pro versions. So for this, you'll have to purchase the 
Tutor Pro LMS, Tutor LMS Pro plugin. But with the free version, you get more than enough options. This is our first true or false question. This is going, this is our question over here. Okay. So under question, I'll just type in true or false question. Okay. Just to show you how this thing works. This is a demo video, obviously tutorial video. So we are not uh, adding any question. We are just adding this thing true or false question. Now what type of question you want? This is the uh, type of question that you want to and whether this question is required. So yes, this is required and how many marks for this? So three points or three marks for this. You can also randomize this thing. So a random question will be displayed or first true. Sometimes first option will be false. Sometimes first option will be true. So you can randomize that thing. And we also want to display points. So how, which question get how has how many points you can display that thing. Now, what is the correct answer? You can select this thing. If false is the correct answer, you can tick mark false. If true is the correct answer, you can select or you can select this true option. Now click on add to question. This is your first question. Click on add question. Now let's create a single choice question. So under title, I'll type in single choice question. Obviously you can type in some question like, uh, uh, what, what is WordPress? Let's type in this question. What is WordPress? Okay. Then we can give some option and answer is required. We can again randomize the option. Sometimes the, you know, whatever options we are going to add at the bottom. Sometimes the third one will be show will be shown as the first one. The second one will be shown as the first one. So options, these things will be randomized. Now for this, I want to give maybe four marks. Okay. And I want to display points. Now click on add an option. Now first we'll type in CMS, which is the right answer. WordPress is the CMS content management system. Now only text. Okay. Click on update answer. This is your first option. Let's add one more option. Uh, WordPress is a blog. It's, it's technically a blog as well, but this is not the right answer. Click on update answer. Then we'll select add an option. Maybe I'll type in WordPress is a machine, which again is a wrong answer. So the right answer is CMS. So we'll select CMS from here. All right. Click on add to questions, two questions added. Click on add to question again, and let's add fill in the blanks. Uh, I'll tap in uh, this thing. First of all, let's, uh, let's select fill in the blanks first. Okay. From here, select fill in the blanks. Okay. And after that, over here, we'll select this option. Dash is the capital of India. Maybe. Okay. This is a simple question. Answer required. Randomize again, maybe four marks for this. And we want to display this thing. Click on add an option. Now, once you click on add an option, uh, you can, uh, let's under question, we'll tap in what is the capital of India? Okay. This is going to be our question and question title will be like this. You can see you, you have to use this dash option. So I'll use this dash option. Okay. You have to add this text over here. So instead of this dash, a dash will be shown. So dash is the capital of India and you can type in the correct answer, which is India, uh, sorry, which is Delhi. I'll tap in this thing, click on update answer. So similarly, you can create multiple questions. Now click on add to questions. Once you're done, click on save and next. Now, how many times? So maybe 10 minutes limit. And after that default, uh, what is the passing grade? 80% or 60% you can type in this thing. Maximum question allowed to answer. You can type in this thing as well. And advanced settings. All right. Okay, fine. So once you're done, click on save and next. And quiz is also created. If you now just update this thing, come over here, refresh this page. Now here, as you can see, we have the article and we have the article icon. We also have this quiz. So people can now come, they can click on enroll course and they can enroll in this course. Now this is all related to free course. So we have seen how to create a course, how to create, how to build the course, how to create topics or basically how to create sections, then lessons, then under lessons, how to add different types of videos. Then we have seen article. We also have seen quiz. Now, if you want to make this course a paid course, what you have to do is you have to open this option. First, we have to set up WooCommerce for that. So whenever there is anything related to payment and all, we have to set up WooCommerce. So you'll see this WooCommerce option under that. You will see settings. You can open this in a new tab, WooCommerce settings. So under WooCommerce, click on settings. First of all, we have to enter our business address. So it could be your office address, whatever address. So I'll tap in ABC. One, two, three, Mumbai. And after that, you'll have to enter your state name and your country name. So I'll type in India, Maharashtra, then your postal code and uh, what currency you want to use. If you want to use Indian rupee, you can search for Indian rupee. If you want to use uh, 
US dollar, you can search for United States dollar or whatever. Then thousand separator in uh, in our country is column and decimal separator is this full stop or point. Now click on save changes. Now leave the products and shipping where you are not shipping anything. This is a digital thing. Come to payments. Now to accept payments, you'll have to integrate different payment gateways. So for that, you'll have to download different plugins. So do one thing at the left hand side, you will see this plugins option. Open this link in a new tab. Okay, plugins link in a new tab. Now click on add new. Now, first of all, you'll have to see what plugins are accepted in your country. For example, mostly in Europe, USA, and all these kind of developed countries, you will see uh, Stripe is very common and very popular. Stripe payment gateway is used. So if you're watching this video from Europe, from USA, from Australia, these kind of countries, uh, even in Israel, I think it is accepted. So these kind of countries, you can use Stripe. For India, Razorpay is a very good payment gateway, so you can use Razorpay. For Africa, you can just do a simple Google search and you can see what payment gateway is accepted in your country. You can create an account on that payment gateway website and you can search a plugin for that. Similarly, PayPal is accepted in almost every country, I guess, so you can use PayPal as well. I'll show you all the different options. So first, let's search for Stripe. Stripe is a payment gateway mostly for Europe and USA and other developed countries. And there are many different plugins for Stripe. I want, I would recommend you to use this one. Payment plugin for Stripe WooCommerce. This is by Payment Plugins. Okay, install this one. There is one by WooCommerce as well, but that is that is really a very bad plugin. So this is the one that I recommend. Now don't activate it right now. We can activate all the plugins at once. Now the next plugin that I want to search for is Razorpay. So search for Razorpay. This is for India. If you're watching this video from India. This is the payment gateway that, you, that I would highly recommend you. Razor Pay for WooCommerce, install this one. Again, don't activate it. Let's search for PayPal. PayPal accepted in most of the countries, so we'll select PayPal. Again, this is available by WooCommerce, but I don't recommend the WooCommerce one. You can see the rating as well. Very bad plugin. I would recommend you to use this one. Payment plugin for uh, PayPal WooCommerce. This is again by Payment Plugins. Okay, make sure to install this one. Now, once you have installed these plugins, you can again come back to plugins and you can select these three plugins. So payment, uh, these three payment plugins. Now go to bulk actions, activate and apply. So you can activate these three plugins from here. Now, once you have activated these plugins, you again, if you again come back to WooCommerce settings and if you click on payments, new options will be added over here. As you can see, Razorpay is added, Stripe is added and if you go at the bottom, PayPal is also added. Let's first set up PayPal because that is the easiest one. So you can first turn it on, click on save changes. Now to set up PayPal, you have to click on PayPal gateway, click on this. You just need to log in with your PayPal account. So if you click on API settings, under API settings, make sure first under environment, you have selected production. Now you need to connect with PayPal. So click on click to connect. Now for this, you must have a PayPal business account. So if you have a regular PayPal account, you can convert that into a business account. Okay, so make sure you have a PayPal business account. Enter your email address, select your country and click on next. Just log in with your business PayPal account. Now once you log in, click on agree and connect. Now this will automatically be connected and you will see your client ID and secret key will automatically be entered over here. Okay, as you can see. Both the things entered and everything is now created and connected. Now can, you can click on save changes. And just like that, you have connected PayPal. Again, come back to payments. Now for Stripe also, same thing. Go to Stripe, credit cards, same thing. Click on API settings. First, make sure instead of test, live is selected. Okay. Now again, for Stripe also, click on uh, first, let's click on save changes. Now click on click to connect. Click on this button. Again, a new tab will be open for you. You have to log in with your stripe account so enter your stripe email address and password and obviously if you don't already have a, uh, if you don't already have an account with stripe or paypal you, you must first create an account with stripe and paypal or any other payment gateway only then you can you know use this option now we have to select your account and click on connect and again this will automatically connect your website with stripe payment gateway and once it is connected you'll automatically be redirected to your woocommerce settings your payment settings so as you can see, automatically redirected, everything is now connected. Click on save changes. Now again, come back to payments. Let's see how we can set up Razorpay. So first click on Razorpay, which is the first option. Click on this. Now for Razorpay, you need the key ID and key secret. Just like Stripe, you need the key ID and key secret, but here we have to get it manually. 
on stripe we just clicked on that button and everything was collected automatically here we have to go and do it manually so you can go to razorpay account basically you just go to this link dashboard.razorpay.com so once you go to dashboard.razorpay.com once you log into your account you will see this option now here at the left hand side you will see the settings option click on settings click on api keys and here you will get your key id so if you're doing this for the first time you will see a button over here generate live key once you click on that button an excel file will be downloaded for you let me show you so a file like this will be downloaded this is a dummy file that i've created but uh, just uh, a file like this will be downloaded for you once you open this file here you'll get your client id or your key id or and key secret so you can copy your key id like this come back to your settings paste in the key id similarly paste in the key secret and click on save changes so just like this you can control and you can link this thing as well now once you do this thing click on accounts and privacy and tick mark this thing uh, allow customers to log into an existing account during checkout also tick mark allow customers to create an account during checkout and then tick mark allow customers to create an account on the my account page and untick these two things okay uh, basically we are disabling auto generation of username and password we want our users to have their own username and password so make sure to untick the these two bottom options and click on save options and finally click on advanced and make sure under cart page cart is selected under checkout page checkout under my account page my account is selected under terms and uh, policy you can select the privacy policy or if you have created a terms and policy page terms and conditions page you can select that page and click on save changes now what i'll do is i'll again go back to payments uh, and enable cash on delivery only for demo purposes because this is a tutorial i don't want to make payment to myself so just for demo purposes i'll enable cash on delivery now click on save changes again now if you again come back to your course and uh, let's now, now let's see how we can uh, create how we can make this course a paid course so if you just select paid course nothing will happen you'll have to select a product for this so what we want to do is we want to copy the title of this course come back to this option now you will see the products option click on products we need to create a new product click on create product and over here we want to name it we, we, have, we want to have the same name perfect diet and meal plan complete course here also the same name okay then over here this is going to be a simple product and this is for tutor so make sure you tick mark this thing for tutor and this is a virtual product which is which means that this is not a tangible product we are not going to ship this project product okay so this is a virtual downloadable or digital product kind of thing and this is for tutor so make sure to tick mark virtual and tick mark tutor now what price do you want to set for this so maybe for this we want to set hundred dollars okay and rest everything don't have to enter anything just enter this thing and click on publish okay just the title price and make sure to tick mark these two now again if you come back to this page course page and refresh it now if you scroll down select paid and now from this product select the title make sure the same title matches perfect diet and meal plan perfect diet and meal plan okay now this will be a paid course if you update this page now if you uh, earlier it was free now if you refresh this page you can see hundred dollars now so people will now have to click on add to cart let's see how this whether this process is working now as you can see product added to cart you can click on view cart or you can click on this cart icon at top you can see this is the product that is added in fact you can do one thing you can also add featured image for the product okay this product that we have added you can add the same featured image so here is product image click on set product image and add the same featured image so that we know what product is added so if somebody goes to their cart they can see that this is the a uh, product that they're purchasing now you can click on proceed to checkout if you want you can also create coupon codes to promote your website so coupon codes are a great way to promote your website you can have different coupon codes you can distribute these coupon codes when people enter that uh, this code over here they can get some discount so to create a coupon code you can hover over woocommerce i think uh, under woocommerce you will see and uh, here we have coupons click on coupons and let's click on uh, this add coupon option and under coupon code i'll type in maybe 10 off you can also generate coupon codes like here as you can see this co code is generated i'll just type in 10 off okay this is the code for example now what happens when you enter this code we can select this option fixed card discount fixed product discount percentage discount i want to give 10 percent discount okay 
coupon amount i'll type in 10 and because this is percentage discount this will be 10 percent and usage restriction you can uh, tick mark this thing individual use only uh, because if the, this if you select this thing this coupon cannot be used in conjunction with other coupons and after that under usage limit usage limit per user you can type in one so one user can use this coupon only once okay publish this uh, thing now if you enter this thing uh, this coupon code 10 off let's first refresh this cart page now if i enter in uh, this coupon code click on apply now here's you can see automatically got 10 percent discount now i have to pay 90 dollars now i can click on proceed to check out enter my details over here so i'll enter near shake and under country and state name i can enter my country name and state name address okay town or city state you can select your state pin code phone number you can type in your phone number your email address it is automatically entered now you can make payment through credit debit card you can make payment through this option you can make payment through paypal through net banking wallet upi all this option I'm selecting cash on delivery because I don't want to make payment to myself and make sure to tick mark. I have read and agreed to terms of conditions. Now click on complete payment. Now here's you can see this is now completed. If you again click on this coupon and here's you can see this transaction is now completed. If you again come back to your website and if you see under WooCommerce orders, you will see one order will be available for you. Okay, here's you can see this is the order. We can now process this order so you can click on this thing. Now, if, if, if this payment was done through, uh, you know, through some other payment gateway, uh, it would have been processed automatically. But this because this is cash on delivery, you have to change the status to completed. OK, or any other case, make sure to always change the status to complete and then click on update. OK, very important step. You also whenever and how will you know that some order has been placed? Whenever there is any new order placed on your website, you'll always get an email that a new order has been placed. So you can go to that order, make sure to change the status of that order to completed. And then again, if you come back to this user's account, if you now click on this course, you can now, now as you can see, you can start learning this course. So if you click on start learning, you have this uh, video. Okay, Vimeo video here with all these things. You can go to comment. If you have any question or comment, you can uh, type in that thing. Then we have the next uh, thing. Okay, this is YouTube video. Then we have video uploaded in the server. Then we have the uh, this option. We have okay article thing. We also have the quiz thing. So if you want to start the quiz, you can click on start quiz. Ten minutes, three questions. What is WordPress? We'll select CMS. Click on submit and next. What is the capital of India? In over here, I'll tap in Delhi. Click on submit and next. True or false? I'll select true and click on submit quiz. Time also timer also was running if you notice properly at the top right three questions total marks 11 three correct answers 11 marks 100 percent pass you can click on details and you can see if all the details so here I had selected CMS and uh, the correct answer was CMS here I had entered Delhi and the correct answer was Delhi so you can see this is working okay this is the quiz thing so if you complete this thing or if you complete anything because quiz is completed here as you can see we have the check mark once you watch this video and once you complete this video, you can uh, tick mark, you can click on this button mark as complete. Okay, but you have to watch that video for that. Okay, only then this will be marked as completed. And if you have any questions, you can go to comment, type in the question. Okay, and after that, click on submit. Then this course, uh, uh, you know, instructor can come and they can help you out. They can answer your question. So this is how this entire process works. Now let's again come back to the home page. So with this, we have seen the technical part. We have seen how you can create a course, how you can process payments, how you can integrate payments. We have seen tutor LMS settings. We have seen everything technical. Now it's time to design this website. So let's see how we can now design this website. And at the end of the video, we'll see how we can enable marketplace thing, how instructor can come on your website. They can create an account as an instructor and they can also add courses. Okay. So now let's start designing this website. So for that, first again, come back to your dashboard. Now let's start with the home page. So first we'll create the home page. We'll design the home page and then we'll see some other pages. So to create a new page, you will click on pages from the left hand side. Click on add new to add a new page. And because this is our home page, we'll name it home. So under title, we'll type in home. Now you don't have to do anything else. Just select this thing and change the template. These are the only two things that you have to do. Add a title home 
and under template you will see at the right hand side you will see this template over here select this option by default it is default template you have to select this and we have to select uh, element of full width select element of full width and you can now publish this page now if you open this page in a new tab this is how it will look like because we have selected the full width uh, template this is how it looks like a blank page now if you see in the url bar here it says your website name slash home so basically what it means is you have created this page home page you have named it home but just by naming it home this does not become your home page we have to set this page as a home page because right now if i click on my website title or website name blog dude i'm redirected to some other website or some other page so we have to set this page as a home page so for that again come back to your main dashboard now from the left hand side hover over settings and click on reading so under settings click on reading now under this option your home page display select the second option a static page and under home page select the home page that you just created home click on save changes now again come back to pages now you'll see besides your home page now it says front page that is because this is now set as your home page you can now edit this page and again if you come back to this page uh, earlier it was saying your website name slash home but you'll see as soon as I refresh this page will be on the same page but this slash home will disappear so let's refresh it here as you can see we are still on the same page but that slash home is gone and now if I click on blog dude I am still on the same page so this is your home page now let's start designing this page so to design this thing we'll be using Elementor page builder we have already installed the plugin so you'll see this button at top edit with Elementor click on this button first I'll explain you what this Elementor page builder is how it works and after that we can start creating this website so first of all if you see uh, we have this thing at the left hand side we have this sidebar we have different elements or different widgets over here they call it elements so we'll call it elements so we have different elements over here we have to use ele these elements to create a website like this one this entire website is created using these elements that you see over here at the left hand side and at the right hand side you'll see your canvas so this is how this is your website page that you will be designing now whenever we design a page we design it section by section so here as you can see this is your first section your hero section then we have featured courses section then we have this counter section category section and finally we have the newsletter section now if you want to create a new section you click on this plus button okay and you select how many columns you want in this section so maybe in this first section we want three columns so we'll select three columns now here as you can see we have three different columns now if you see at the left hand side the settings have now changed we see edit section again if you want to go back to elements you click on this nine dots icon if you follow my mouse cursor click on this icon and now if you want to use a button for example if you want to create a button you will simply drag and drop the button element over here and after that you can change the title and all these things now again once you use any element you will see left hand side settings change now because you have using button element here it says edit button so we have settings related to this element this button element and every single element will have three sections content style and advanced in content you change the content for example instead of re uh, instead of click here we'll type in read more here as you can see text change in style obviously we'll change the style for example you can change the typography you can increase or decrease the size of the text increase or decrease the line height all these things and similarly you can also change the color so instead of this color if you want red color blue color whatever color you want we can select that color and under advanced we'll do some advanced things like change the positioning z index css id classes all these advanced things again if you want to go back to elements you click on this nine dots icon now maybe for the middle column we want to use an icon so we'll select the icon element drag and drop it over here again at the left hand side here as you can see edit icon now instead of this icon if you want some other icon you can select that icon click on insert and now here as you can see we have the icon now under this element as well we have three options content style and advanced so if you want go to style you can change the color of this icon as well you can also increase or decrease the size you can rotate this thing you know you can do all these things so this is how this entire thing works this is how this page builder works now let me cut this thing let's again come back over here and now let's start designing this website let's start with the first section now over here we have divided this section into two different columns at the left hand side we have this text then we have this subtext and we have two different call to action at the right hand side we have this image so first of all i'll just copy this text come over here and we'll create a new section so to create a new section click on the plus button two columns so we'll select this two columns now these two columns are by default equal 50 percent each so if you click on this option edit column you can see this is by default 50 percent if you make it 60 
here as you can see this uh, automatically widens you can even control it like this so you can bring your mouse cursor in the middle and you can do it like this now in this example i want it 55 and 45 so for the left column you can click on this option edit column option and under column width you can type in 55 okay now inside this thing we want to add this text so for this text we'll be using the heading element so drag and drop the heading element over here now paste in the text or type in whatever text you want now once you type in the text after that go to style and now let's style this thing first of all if you see this is the color very dark blue color so if you want to if you go to any website and if you see if you like any color or anything and if you want to get the exact same color you can simply right click on that thing for example if, if you want to select this uh, this much and if you want to get the color of this thing color code for this text you can right click over here click on inspect and over here at the bottom you will see right hand side here we have color and this is the color code you can even see the color over here so you can just click on this color code copy it come back to your website and you can paste it over here under text color click on this and under this option paste in this color code and now as you can see we have this color now i'll save this color because we'll be using this color a lot here as you can see we have used the same color also here we have used the same color so what i'll do is i'll save this color code so that i don't have to do it every time i don't have to come over here and inspect the element i can simply click on this plus button create new global color and maybe i'll type in dark blue all right so all right so i'll click on create and we have saved this color then after that we can also change the typography or the font styling of this thing so by default this is roboto if you click on typography if you click on this pencil button you can see this is roboto i want to change the font style or font family to poppins poppins is the font family that i use the most so if you search for poppins here as you can see this is the font style that i want this is the one that we have used in the demo website then we also want to make sure to increase the size so if you do it like this you can increase the size of this thing so maybe let's make it uh, 67 60 so 66 or 67 pixels and after that you can also make it bolder or lighter so you can increase or decrease the weight so if you make it 100 it will be thin then if you make it uh, bold you can make it 700 or you can change this thing you can also change the line height so space between each line so if you go to line height first of all change this thing instead of pixels we want to make it em so if you click on px you will see the em option and type in 1.2 Okay, if you keep on increasing, as you can see, line height between these things increase. So I want to set this thing to 1.2 EM, line height. Then after that, let's go to this option. Then we don't have to do anything else. Let's see the next option. We have this text. So I'll copy the text, come over here, use the text editor, drag and drop the text editor over here. Okay, because this was heading, this was title, we, we use the heading element and this is a simple text. So we're using the text editor. Now type in whatever text you want. Okay, like this and if you want it in multiple lines you can just press enter and bring this thing in a new line now go to style now for this color let's see what this color code is i think this is black color so you can click on this thing and for black color you can just select it like this bring it at the very bottom and you can see the color code is hashtag 0000000, 000 000, so six times zero now i'll save this color as well name it black so this is going to be a black color now again for typography we have to change this thing and we have to make it uh, poppins then change the size to 16 and rest everything looks good if you want you can even change the line height maybe it will make it 1.7 em okay then after that we have this button so let's drag and drop the button element here as you can see we have the button element drag and drop it over here at the bottom button text says explore courses so under text i'll type in explore courses right and after that i want to redirect them uh, redirect this to my courses page so if you search for this you will have your option in fact if you go to your website this page is automatically created if you go to your website and if you just type in your website name slash courses you will see this page your course archive page this is the page so you can copy the link paste it over here so whenever somebody clicks on this link they will be redirected to your course archive page now go to style let's style this thing so here as you can see we have this color as the background color again i'll right click over here click on inspect to get this color code and now here as you can see background color at the right hand side bottom right click on this thing copy the color come over here and again click on color change the background color to this color and also make sure to save this color so that we can use it later so click on this plus button i'll name it purple color this is going to be our main color click on create 
Then after that also let's change the typography. Now you can see we have to change the typography again and again. We have to make instead of Roboto, we have to change this thing to Popin. So this is taking some time. So what you can do is for now just change it Popin and let's do all these settings and then I'll show you how we can save some time. Now for the size I wanted 16 pixels and I want it a little bit bolder. So I'll select semi bold and for line height I'll select EM 1.3 all right. Then after that for a button you can see this button looks like this. Now if you want or if you want a rectangular button with you know sharp corners you can do one thing you can change this thing border radius you can make it zero. Now if I again hide this thing you can see this is how it looks like okay sharp corners and if you want to make it rounded or circular you can increase the border radius to 50 and now as you can see this is how it will look like okay so if you want you can change this thing as well. Now we also need to do one thing we need to add uh, this border like this okay here as you can see we have added this border. So I'll add the same color border so under border option borders type select solid and type in two pixels okay and under border color because we have already added the color you can go to color select this globe icon and now we have this purple color so select this color as your border color okay this is how it looks like. Then after that we want what we want to do is we want to change the padding. I think padding looks good but still if you want to change the padding if you uh, here we have the padding at the bottom first of all delink it. So if you click on this link icon it will be delinked Now everything will be zero. Now from top and bottom I want it 15 pixels and from left and right I want it 32 okay. So 15 top and bottom 32 left and right. Now we have this option if you hover over this thing what happens is the background color changes to white and the text color changes to this color. So you can uh, change this thing go to hover. Maybe I want to change the background color to black. Okay, so I'll go to background color, select color under background type and select black color or dark blue color for example. Now as you can see, I'll also make sure to select this border type. Border also should be the same color. And now as you can see this changes to this dark, dark blue color. Okay, so you can do it like this. Then after that uh, we have the next button. Now for this button what we can do is, first let's come over here. So for this button we can again add a new button, drag and drop the button. Now before that what I want to do is I want to change, first of all make sure to update this page. Whenever you do any changes on this website, always make sure to click on this update button so that your changes are saved. Now again and again we have to change the font family to Poppins. So let's do one thing, let's change the you know, default font family to Poppins so that we don't have to do it again and again. So for that you'll click on this hamburger icon at the top left corner if you see this three lines hamburger icon, click on that. Click on site settings and under global fonts you can change everything to Poppins. So under primary click on this here as you can see default is Roboto we want to change this thing to Poppins. Similarly for secondary change this thing to Poppins alright. Similarly for text and accent as well. So text color text font family will also be changed and with that the link color or button color or button font family will also be changed. Now click on update. Now once you update this thing you can come back. Let's again use a new button element. If I drag and drop it over here this is how it look like. Now we want these buttons side by side. So first of all let's design this button like this. We want this orange color so I'll get the color code. Right. Here it is. Copy the color code. Come over here. And the text over here says start learning. So I'll type in the same thing over here. Start learning. And with this we also have this icon if you see we have this arrow icon so if you want to use icon you can click on this icon and option and click on icon library and if you search for arrow whatever arrow you want you can select that for example let's select this one arrow right click on insert. Now we, we want it after the text so icon position will be after and after that you can also increase or decrease the spacing between icon and this text. Now go to style. And after that you can do the some same changes. You can go to typography, change this thing to same. We will be basically keeping everything same. So text size will be 16, weight will be 600, line height will be 1.3 em. And after that background color will be this orange color. So I'll paste in this color. In fact we don't want any background color. Background color will be transparent like we have in this case. And we want border color and text color to be this color. So I'll again click on this thing and uh, to make it transparent by the way whatever if you want to make the background color transparent click on this thing and if you see first we have this color thing at the top okay if you uh, move it left and right you will see different colors 
at the bottom we have this transparency thing so if you move it at the very left this will become transparent now let's change the text color to this orange color and after that border also we'll make it two pixels solid and again same color okay this is how it looks like All right now again for border radius 50 pixels and same thing padding 15 from top and bottom and 32 from left and right now we want both these buttons side by side so what you can do is you can click on this first button go to advanced and change the width so on the width you can change this thing to inline now do the same thing for the second button click on this button go to advanced width make it inline okay now as you can see this is how it looks like now we need some space between these two buttons so for, i'll click on the second button and under margin i'll dealing this thing first now at the left hand side i'll add maybe 10 pixels margin okay let me add 10 pixels margin now this is how it looks like all right now once you do this thing again make sure to always update these settings now let's see how we can get these kind of uh, images for free this is not a free image by the way this is Ad adobe's copyright image but i'll show you how we can get these kind of images for free so you can go to this website unsplash.com or there are other websites as well pexels.com freepick.com okay so go to pexels.com then freepick free pik okay so free pik dot com and over here you can search for that for example if you're so if you search for student uh, you you'll get this option here as you can see you can use these kind of images if you search for teacher you'll get images related to teacher now these are all copyright free images you don't need any you don't have any copyright issues with this you can use these images for free on your website so whatever image you want whatever image you like you can use that image all right so you can go you can come over here as well and search for teacher so you can go to any website pixels or all these options here as you can see we have this option we have different images over here okay if you want to use this image or whatever image you want you can use that image for example let's use this image okay if you want to use this image or any other image you can go to that image and you can just download that image so for example i if i you if you want this image click on download free download the biggest file okay because if you click on this drop down icon, you can see there are different sizes. If you click on download free, you will download the original size. We want the original size. Okay, the biggest size because we want to make it transparent. Here, as you can see, we want to remove the background of this image. So to do that thing, first of all, make sure to download your image from unsplash.com or pexels.com or freepick.com. These are all free websites. Now to remove the background of this image, you can go to this website, remove BG. So you can go to remove.bg, remove background, and you can just drag and drop this image that you have just copied. Now, once you upload this image over here, background will automatically be removed and you will get a new image file. Here, as you can see, background is removed successfully. Now you can click on download and you can download this image. Okay. So this is how easy it is to do this thing. Now you can come back to this website and you can use this image over here. So you can come over here, click on this edit column and go to style. And we want to use this image as a background image for this column. So click on edit column, go to style, select background, upload this image. So go to upload files and select this file. Now I'll be using this image that I've already uh, used. So I'll go to this website. I want to use this hero image. Now once you upload this image, click on insert media and this is how it will look like. First of all, this image is getting repeated. So I don't want that. So I'll turn this thing to no repeat. Repeat will be no repeat. And after that, for size, you can make it cover or for this, for this example, I'll make it contain. Okay. So this is how it will look like. Or for size, if you want, you can even change the size as well. There are many different options. If you want, you can make it auto. Okay. Or if you want, you can make it default or if you want, you can even, even make it custom. Okay. So that you can control your size like this. Similarly, for positioning as well, you can make it center left, center, center, top left, all these options. Or here also, you can go to custom option. Okay. So X position and Y position, you can change it like this. So maybe I'll change the X position. Okay. Uh, bring you, bring it over here. Maybe. All right. Now, whenever you use image in the column, in the edit column as, as an, as a background image, you should always add spacer in this column. So let me explain. You just search for spacer element here, as you can see, bring the spacer element in this column and over here, instead of 50 pixels, type in. 450 or 500 pixels. So in this case, I'll type in 500 pixels. Now, if you again go back to edit column and now if you want, you can go change the size to auto. Okay. So you have this option. Now go to advanced. Make sure you don't have any margin or padding. So make sure everything is zero. Okay. Margin and padding, everything should be zero. 
Now select this option. We want to bring everything in the middle. Like we have it over here. We want to bring everything in the middle. So click on this edit column. Okay, edit section. Click on this option, edit section, six dots icon, blue option, blue section. Now to bring everything in middle, you can select vertical align, make it middle. Now here, as you can see, this is how it will look like. Again, make sure to click on update so that your changes are saved. Now let's see how we can get this background image that you see. Okay, this kind of background image. Again, you can use a free tool to create these kind of background images. So you can go to this website, canva.com. And this is also a free website. Just make sure to create an account. Once you create an account, whatever size you want, you can search for that. So in this example, I'll click on create design and select custom size. Okay, so you will have many different sizes, whatever size you want, you can select. I'll select custom size and type in 920 width and maybe 500 or 700, whatever you want that much will be your height. So in this case, I'll select 700 height. Okay, which should be 920 height could be anything. Uh, in this case, five, six or 700 would be better. Now what I have done over here is main color, main background color is this color, as you can see this gray color. So if you want to get the background color for this, there is this Google Chrome browser, Google Chrome browser add on that I'm using colorzilla. If you click on this add on, if you click on this icon, you can get any color code. So if I click on this thing here, as you can see, this is the color code EB, EFF0, I guess. If I come over here, click on this thing, click on this canvas, you will see this option background color, click on that. Now click on this add new color option and paste in this color code. Here, as you can see, this is the color code. Then after that, what we need to do is we need to click on elements and we need to add this shape. So if you want, if you search for shape, rectangle shape or whatever shape you want, click on rectangle shape, this shape will be added for you. Now you can increase or decrease the size of this shape however you want it. Okay. You can also rotate it like this. All right. Again, make sure to increase or decrease the size if you want. I'll bring it over here at the very left and maybe I'll change this color to this dark color. So let me get this color code. Okay. This is 2F2D52. So if I again come over here, click on this thing, click on this color thing at the top. Now click on add new color, paste in this color code. 2F2D52, you will get this color. Now the same thing what I'll do is I'll right click on this thing and duplicate it. Now bring it over here. Now change this color to this thing, okay? So again color code and let's get the color. This is not this one. Let's try it again. All right, yeah, this is the one, 8C52FF. So I'll come over here, click on this color, add new color, 8C52FF, okay? I'll bring it over here like this. If you want to bring anything uh, at top, you can control that positioning as well. For example, if I want to bring this thing at top or if you want to bring anything at bottom, you can do that thing as well. Okay, maybe this looks good. All right, so whatever looks good to you, you can just select this thing and after that click on share and then you can click on download and click on download again. This file will be downloaded for you. Now you can use this file as your background image if you, if you come over here. Click on edit section. I've given you this image by the way. Click on edit section, go to style, click on background type and uh, under image, upload this image. Okay, so you can go to image, select option, select files and under media folder also, I've given you this image. Here as you can see BG, hero BG. If you want to use my image or if you want, if you want to create your own image, you can obviously do that. Click on insert media, change the size to cover and this is how your image will look like. And now if you hide this thing, this is how your section will look like. Okay, now click on update. And with this, you have created your first section. Now let's see how we can create our next section, which is very simple. We have this simple section. First, we have a title. So I'll copy the title. Come over here to create a new section. Click on the plus button. In this case, we want a single column. So we'll select the first option. Now go back to elements, drag and drop the heading element and type in the title featured courses, bring it in center. Now you can also do one thing, you can change your primary and secondary fonts, okay? So default color is this blue color because that is the primary color. You can change your primary and secondary color as well so that you don't have to change the color again and again. So for this also you can click on this hamburger icon side settings and this time you can select global colors. Now for primary color, maybe I want to use this dark blue color. Okay, so I'll copy the color code and replace this color. Now as you can see, as soon as you replace the color, primary color, this color also changed. And for secondary color, you can re maybe again use the same color maybe, all right? For accent, I'll use this color. For links, basically, I'll use this color, all right? Now click on update. So again, come back. Click on this featured courses. Let's uh, see. 
This is a little bit smaller, so we'll have to decrease the size, go to style and change the font family. It is already Poppins because we have changed the default font family. Now change the size to 32, make it 700 bolder and line height, you can increase this thing to 1.5 EM. Then after that, we have the text. So I'll copy this text like this. Come over here, use the text editor, drag and drop it over here, paste in the text. Then go to style, bring it in center. Now for text color, maybe I want to use the primary color. Okay, so I'll use this primary color if you want to use some other color as well. Some lighter color or some other color. In this case, let's see what we are using. Inspect. Okay, so this is the color code that I'm using. Click on this color. I'll save this color as well. Click on thing and I'll type in text color. Okay, type in text color. Click on create. Now here we have uh, some spacing at left and right and this thing is coming in two lines. So if you want to bring this thing in two lines, there are two ways of doing it. Uh, you can go to content and just press enter wherever you want. So this comes in two line or if you want, you can go to advanced. Another way is doing like this. Go to advanced, select percentage under margin and left and right. You can add some percentage like 25 percentage from left and right. This is how it will look like or maybe 15 percentage from left and right. Okay, not like this. This is how it will look like. Okay, so if you want, you can use percentage left and right or if you want, you can just press enter and bring this thing in a new line. For top also, I think that would be a much better option instead of using the new line. We'll go to advanced margin and add some margin, maybe 50 percentage right or no 50, maybe 30 percentage at right and click on update. All right. So we have the text and all. Then after that, we have to display these things. We have to display our courses. So for that, we'll be using this element. We'll be using the course list element. So if you search for course list and uh, let's search for course list, the entire thing, just search for list, for example. If you search for list, you will see the course list option, drag and drop it at the bottom. And this is how it will look like. We have created one course. That is the reason why we see one. If you want one column, two column, three columns, you know, if you want only one column, this is how your course thing will look like. If you want two columns, this is how it will look like. If you want three columns, you know, you can have this option. How many courses per page? Maybe we want six courses. This is the uh, classic skin. If you want, you can change this thing to this card skin. Okay, this is how your card skin will look like. If you want, you can make it stacked. Okay, this is how the stacked will look like and you can even make it overlaid. So what is the style you want? You can select, maybe let's go with the classic style. Now, whatever things you want, you can have it and whatever you don't want, you can rem remove it. For example, we have rating. If you don't want this rating, you can just make it no and this will disappear. So if you don't want, uh, uh, let's see. If you don't want the author name, you can just remove this thing as well. But we want all these options so we can select. We also want the difficulty level. So this batch over here is at the top. If you see all levels, we also want category. Okay, just one category. Don't want pagination. So remove the pagination. Now go to query and pagination is fine. Rest everything looks good. Now you can go ahead and style this thing. Okay, everything looks fine. If you want, to, for example, if you also want to change this thing, change the title and all so you can go to card and uh, in fact go to content this is the title if you want to increase or decrease the size of the title like this okay if you want to make it smaller or bigger you can do it maybe 18 pixels if you want to make it smaller then this text okay meta text you can increase or decrease this size as well so maybe for meta text i'll make it 12 okay category also will make it 12 okay so you can increase or decrease i'm just showing you if you want to increase it you can make it 14 okay or if you want to decrease it it all depends on you whatever you like you can have that according to your needs then we have the button so select this footer i think footer button will be under footer so select footer uh, we have the button option cart button here as you can see cart button now whatever style size you want you can have it first of all background color we want uh, uh, we want this type of color so background color is fine we just need to change the border color and we want to make the border bolder. Okay, so we'll select border option. Here it is border type, make it solid, make it two pixels. So it will become bolder as you can see. Then after that, change the border color to this color, your purple color or accent color. And after that, also change the text color. Okay, so text color, change this thing to this purple color. And you can make the text a little bit bolder if you want, maybe 700 text or 600. All right, click on update. So you can style it like this. If you want a background, uh, if you want this shadow, you can use this option box shadow at the bottom. Click on this thing. 
not for button, remove this thing. We have to use a content option. Go to content. Let's see whether we have in content or card. I think it is under card. Yeah, box shadow. Now if you click on box shadow, if you want to increase or decrease the shadow, if you want to change the shadow color and all, you can do everything from here. All right. Click on update. You also can change these things. So uh, for example, here, as you can see, uh, we have this badge over here at the top. You can change the badge thing. We have this wish list thing. You can change those colors and those styling as well. Now, once you do this thing at the bottom, we want this button. So what I'll do is I'll copy this button because this is a very similar button. So I'll copy the button, paste it over here, right click, paste. First of all, make sure it is center, go to advanced and change the width to default. Okay, back to default and explore courses. And again, whenever somebody clicks on this button, they will be redirected to the courses page. So here we are displaying only five, six courses. But if they click on browse all courses, they can see all the courses at once. Click on update again. Now, finally, let's do one thing. Let's add padding or at top. So at top of this section, we have this padding and at bottom also we have some padding. So let's add that. So click on edit section and you can also increase or decrease the width. Not recommended, but you can do that thing as well. Go to advanced and change the padding. So for top and bottom, I want to add maybe 75 pixels, right? Both at top and bottom. Now here, as you can see, we have spacing at bottom and top. Now again, click on update. Now our next section is this counter section. So let's see how we can create this counter section. So for that, again, we'll click on this plus button. And after that, we'll divide this into four different columns. Okay, we'll divide this section or row into four different columns because we want these four options. Now inside these first, we want this image. Now this icon that you see over here, this is a free icon. Again, you can download these kind of icons for absolutely free. There is another website. You can go to this website, flaticon.com. Okay, go to flaticon.com. Whatever icons you see on my screen, everything is downloaded from flat icon. So if you want books, certificate or uh, computer, whatever you want, for example, if you search for books, now here, as you can see, we have so many different icons for books. Maybe if you want this one, okay, let's see. Yeah, let's, let's select this one. For example, if you want this color, if you want this book icon, you can select this thing. You can also change the color. Like we have this color over here. So maybe let me get this color code. Okay. This is the color code. So I'll copy the background color. Come over here, click on edit icon and select this thing, choose a new color, select this option, paste in this color. And now as you can see, icon color is changed. You can now click on download and download the 512 size. Okay. Click on download PNG and download the biggest size 512. Click on free download. And this icon will be downloaded for you as you can see book icon. So you can download all these kind of icons. Again, I'm saying all these icons that you see on your screen, these are all downloaded from flat icon for free. So make sure to always change the color. Now, once you have downloaded these icons, you can come over here, search for image element because this is an image, drag and drop the image element. Now upload this icon that you have downloaded. So go to media folder. I've given you all these icons over here. Maybe let me upload these many click on open. Now let's see what we have over here. We have this icon oh, for, for instead of that, if you want to add some other icon as well, maybe instead of that, let's select this icon, click on insert media. Okay. Make it full size. Now go to style. Obviously we don't want this big icon. We will change the width to 30 percentage. All right. So this is the size that we want. Now this is your, uh, this is your image. Now below that we need to add the counter. So again, come back to elements, search for counter element and drag and drop it over here. Now the number is 3000 and here the text is learners. So under numbers, I'll type in 3000 ending number will be 3000 and title will be learners or you can type in 3000 students if you want. Now let's change the size and all. So go to style color and everything is fine. Change the size for number. First we have number. So change the size of number to 32 and 600 is fine. So I won't change it. Now let's select title and for this size, I'll select maybe let's select 18 pixels. Okay. 18 pixels and you can increase or decrease the line height. So for line height, I'll make it 2 EM. All right. Now, once you have, once you have achieved this thing, you can now click on this thing, copy, paste, paste, and also paste. So right click and copy and paste. Similarly for this thing, right click on this, click on copy, right click over here, paste, right click, paste, right click and paste. Now for second option, you can click on this thing and just not need to change the icon instead of this. Maybe let's select this icon. Now this time you don't have to change the uh, width and all because we have already copied this thing. So styling and everything is copied. Just need to change the content. Similarly for this also styling is available. Just need to change the content. 
So I'll type in 5000 certificates. So here I'll type in 5000 and under title certificates. Okay. So this is how you can do it for third and fourth. Also, you can do the same thing. Then we want to change the background color of this section. So I'll right click over here, click on inspect to see the background color. Here, as you can see, this is the background color. I'll get this color code. Come over here, click on edit section, go to style, back, background type, paste in this color. Okay. We can also do one thing. We can add some spacing at top and bottom. So we can go to advanced and let's add some padding from top and bottom. So I'll add 90 pixels padding both from top and bottom and then click on update. You have also completed your counter section. Then we have this category section. So again, for this, we'll add a new row. Now this time what I'll do is I'll add a single column, but inside that thing we'll add inner columns. So we want four columns. So what we'll, we'll do is we'll use this element inner section, drag and drop it over here. By default, you get two columns. We want four. So you can right click on edit column, click on add new. Again, right click on edit column, click on add new. Now we have four different columns. Now inside this thing, we want to use this option. If you see, we are using image box. Okay. So we already have these images. We just need to use the image box element. So if you search for image box here, okay, this is the one image box. First of all, use the image or upload the image. Maybe let's upload this one. Click on insert media. Then we have the title. So in this case, it is art and design, for example, or maybe we are using this icon. So voiceover. Okay. Then after that, uh, 25 courses, maybe I have 25 courses on voiceovers. So I'll type in this thing. Now image position will be left. So under image position, make it left. This is how it will look like. Now go to style and let's fix this thing. Now, first of all, spacing will be 10. Okay. So I'll select image spacing will be 10 and width you can select 60. Okay. If you want to increase the size of this thing, you can select width under this thing. You can type in 60 or if you want, you can increase or decrease this number, obviously. It all depends on you. Now let's change the content. So click on content and first we have the title. So select the title and we'll change the size of this title to 18 pixels and maybe we'll make it 500 medium. Okay. And also we want to make vertical alignment middle. So everything is in middle, vertical align middle. Now for the subtitle for the description, we'll select this thing, change the size to 14 and 400. All right. This is how it will look like. Now we can do one thing. We can select this option. We can select the column in a column. Okay. So select this column in a column. Now we want this background color. Okay. Here, as you can see, so again, right click, get the color code for the background. Okay. This is the color F5, F3, FE. So I'll paste in the color, go to color option, style option, paste in this color under background. We have this color. Then after that, we need some spacing and margin from all sides. So first of all, go to advanced. First, we'll add margin because here, as you can see, between each columns, we have this spacing. So this middle spacing is the margin. So under margin, we'll add maybe 10 pixels from left and right. Okay. 10 pixels from left and right. Now padding for padding. I'll add 30 pixels from top and bottom and 25 from left and right. Obviously, if you want, you can change this thing as well. Then after that, we also want to do one thing. We want to make sure that these uh, corners are a little bit rounded. Let's see if it is already rounded. Okay. So this is all sharp so we can make it a little bit rounded. So for that, we'll use the border radius. Let's see where, where here we have the border option under border radius. You can type in like uh, 10 or 20. If you type in 20, this is how it will look like as you can see, but we don't want this much. So maybe we'll just type in a small number. Okay. Not this much. So for this example, we'll type in just five pixels. Okay. A little bit, or maybe just 10 pixels, nothing more than that. All right. So whatever you want, you can type it. I'll just type in five. Now, once you have this thing, you can now click on right click on here, click on copy, right click, paste, right click, paste, right click, paste. So this will again save you a lot of time. Now right click on edit column. Okay. And click on copy. Now right click on second edit column. Now this time select paste style. We want to paste the column style and over here as well. And also over here. Now for the second one, just click on this thing, change the icon to Maybe this icon, click on insert media, change the text to art and design. Okay. And maybe with this, in this, we have 15 courses. So you can type in and similarly for this third and fourth column, you can do it. Now, once you're done, you can duplicate this top column, duplicate the inner section. So right click duplicate. And then after that, you can create this thing. You can change this thing as well. Now let's add some spacing between these two. So select this second inner section, click on edit inner section, go to advanced. And just add 10 pixels margin at top. All right. Let's see. 
not 10, let's add 20 pixels at top, right? Now, as you can see, this looks so much better. And finally, we can add the top and bottom padding on, in the main section. So click on this main row, click on edit section, go to advanced. And for padding top and bottom, let's add 90 pixels. Okay, 90, 90 pixels. And finally, again, make sure to update. Finally, we have the newsletter section. So let's see how we can create this section. In this, we have this, uh, we have this text. So we'll copy the text, come over here, add a new section first. Now inside this, we'll use the heading option, drag and drop the heading, type in the text, bring it in center and change the style and also go to style. Uh, don't change the color right now. We want to change the color to white, but we'll change it later on because right now, if you change the color to white, it will disappear obviously because we have white background. So first let's change the typography. So for this, we'll make it 32 pixels and 700 and line height of 1.5 EM. All right. And uh, then after that, let's let's actually do one more thing. We can change the content. Click on edit section. Now for the width, you can make it like 600. If you want it like this, change the width to 600. All right. Width 600. Then we have this form. Okay. Newsletter form. So for this, you will have to, let's see whether we have this MailChimp. We don't have MailChimp. You can use the short code form. Okay. Dra drag and drop this short code element. Okay. Click on update first. We have to now get the short code. For that, come back to your dashboard. You will see MailChimp for WordPress option. Okay. Click on that. First of all, you will have to integrate your website with MailChimp. You will have to link your website with MailChimp. So for that, you go to MailChimp.com. Now, first of all, if you don't know what MailChimp is, how to do free email marketing and all, if you want to learn everything for free, how to do free email marketing with MailChimp, you can go to YouTube and search for that tutorial. If you go to YouTube and just search for Nayar Sheikh MailChimp, you'll get MailChimp tutorial. And here you can learn in detail how MailChimp free email marketing with templates, automation and e-commerce WordPress features. So you can watch that video. Click on login. I'll just explain you how you can link your website and create this beautiful form. So log in this thing. If you have not logged in, create an account. If you have not already created an account, once you log in, you will see your avatar at the bottom left. Click on that, click on profile. And here you will get your API key under extras. Click on API keys and just copy your API key from here. All right. Come back to your website, paste in this key, click on save changes. And now your website will be connected with MailChimp. We will see connected. Now you can click on form under MailChimp. And you can uh, just name it anything. I'll name it form one, maybe. And you can select any list for this. Click on add new form. Uh, if you're doing this in 2022, 23, you will not be, you will not be asked to add any list or anything. So this is how the default style, very boring, as you can see, very simple form. This is how it looks like. We want to change this thing. So again, open the media folder that you have downloaded media folder. Inside this, you will see the pages folder. And inside this, you will see MailChimp for WordPress form. Open this one, MailChimp for WordPress form. Copy everything. Come over here. First, delete everything. Now paste in whatever you have copied. Still, it is looking very bad. Don't worry. We can fix the styling. First, click on Save Changes. Now, once you click on Save Changes, you have this short code over here. Click on Copy this short code. Come back to your website. Paste in this short code. Again, this is looking very bad. No worries. We'll fix it. Click on Update. First, do one thing, come back to your website again and you will see under appearance, you will see customize. Click on that. So under appearance, click on customize. Now, this is the option that you'll see. Now, you, over here at the left hand side, you'll see additional CSS. Click on that. Now, again, open the media folder and open this one. MailChimp for WordPress CSS. Open this and uh, copy everything. Just select everything. Copy. Come over here. First, let me go at the bottom. This is how it is looking right now. As soon as you paste in this uh, CSS, let's see what happens. So let me paste in. Now, as you can see, this is how it will look like. Okay. You'll get this design. Now I can go ahead and publish this thing. And we, after that, you can cut this thing. Okay. So this is completed. Come back over here. Let's refresh this page. Now let's go at the bottom. This is how it is looking. Now, finally, let's add this image in the background. So we'll click on edit section. Uh, Control Z. If you by mistakenly do any thing, just press Control Z on or Control Z on your keyboard. It will undo the changes. Now click on edit section. Go to style. Let's add the image in the background. So upload file. You can use or you can upload any image if you want. For example, if you want to use this image, you can use this one as well. Click on open. Click on insert media. Here, as you can see, maybe size will select cover and position will select center center. All right, or maybe top 
per center. Let's see. Whatever position you want, you can select that. Now we want to do one thing. We want to, uh, the background thing is very light. So we will do one thing. We'll add overlay. So select background overlay, select color, and maybe let's select this uh, primary color. Okay. And after that, you can change the opacity like this. Okay. If you want to make it lighter or darker, you can select this thing. Then after that, let's add some spacing at top and bottom, padding at top and bottom. So for top, I'll add 50 and for bottom 75. Okay. This is how it will look like. And finally, we can change this color to this white color. Okay. Let's change the white color. White color code is FFF six times. Now click on update. And with this, we have completed this website. Okay. With this, we have completed this homepage basically. Now this is come, we have completed the homepage only for desktop. If you see this website in a mobile phone, it will look very different. So now we have to make sure that this page is hundred percent mobile and tablet friendly. So first of all, let's open this website in a mobile phone. Let's see how it looks like. So if you want to see that you will see this icon at the bottom left corner responsive mode, click on responsive mode and select mobile phone. Now this is how it will look like. First of all, go at top. Now with, you will see this with option over here, 360, change this thing to 400. Okay. And this is much better. Now this is how it is looking on mobile phone. As you can see, not very good, really looking very bad. So we need to fix this thing. So to fix this thing, let's start from top, click on this text, bring it in center. Maybe we want to change the alignment to center. Now, whatever you're changing, for example, right now we just change the alignment to center only for mobile phone. Here, as you can see, the icon over here is mobile. So this alignment will be changed to, uh, to center only for mobile phone. For desktop, it will still be left side. Now go to style, change this size to some other size, maybe 40 or let's decrease this thing to maybe 36. Again, you can see we have the mobile icon. So which means that size is changed only in the mobile phone. Now second, select the second text and uh, make it center and go to advanced. We don't want this spacing margin at right 30. So we'll make it zero or we'll, we'll actually do one thing. We'll add margin left and right of 10 percentage. All right. Like this, then we can also increase the line height. So maybe one EM or 1.5. Let's see 1.5 EM. Then select this button. Okay. Uh, if it looks something like this, you can do one thing, change the sizing a little bit, decrease the sizing so that we can have both the button side by side. So go to typography, change this to maybe 14 pixels. All right. Let's select the second button again, change this one as well to 14. All right. Maybe let's see 13 for the first one as well. Let's change this thing to 13. And now as you can see, this is how it is looking. And for the second button, or uh, maybe we don't want 10 um, left. We just want five pixels left. Okay. This is how it is looking again. If you hide this thing, this is how it will look like. Now, maybe if, if you don't want this image in the uh, mobile version, you can get rid of this image as well. You can click on this thing. You can just click on edit column, go to advanced. And after that responsive, and you can hide this thing on mobile. Now, if you see, this is how it will look like no image. Okay. Only this much. And let's add some spacing at top and bottom. So edit section, advanced, padding, maybe top and bottom, 50 pixels. Again, if you hide this thing, this is how it will look like. Okay. Then uh, we have our next section. This is this section. This is looking good. Scroll down. Now, uh, what I want to do is I don't want it one by one. Uh, I want to bring two things in one line. So you can click on this thing, edit column, change this thing to 50. Se click on the second edit column, change this thing to 50 and do the same thing for third one and the fourth one. So click on edit column, change the width to 50. Scroll down, then do the same thing for this. Click on edit column, 50. Select the second one, edit column, 50. Third one, edit column, 50. Fourth one, 50. So that we have two options in one row, all right? Do the same thing for all these options. And finally, for this one as well, now we need some spacing over here in between this thing. If you see, this is uh, touching this thing. So we can select this option, edit column and add part. Maybe let's add margin from all sides 10 for this also margin from all sides 10, all right? For the bottom one as well, select this margin, all sides 10, not 140 or 50, 10 for this one as well, margin, all sides 10. Okay. Then this section. Maybe we'll select uh, edit column. I'll add a little bit 
margin or padding maybe first of all padding top 50 was good left and right we can add maybe 10 and bottom 75 okay now this is how it is looking again click on update now this is looking so much better on mobile phone as well all right similarly you can go to uh, a tablet and fix your website in tablet however you want this website to look in a tablet all right and with this we have completed this home page we have made it mobile friendly as well now you can come back to your dashboard okay so we have seen how to create different courses now let's see how we can create a blog post so if you again come back to the demo website go to blogs here as you can see we'll see how to create these kind of blog posts if you open a single blog post this is how it looks like the title we have the date featured image and all these things so to create a new blog post you click on this post option at the left hand side first of all we have this dummy blog post hello world we'll have to delete it so click on trash and delete it now click on add new to add a new blog post now this is going to be your title how to get 1 million plus visitors in 30 days without anything okay whatever the title is you can just paste in the title then below the thing you can just you know just type in whatever your content is so just type in like that you can just you know keep on typing like this simple stuff i'll just paste in this thing okay like this if you want you can even use images and all in this thing just like elementor you can click on this plus button if you follow my mouse cursor click on plus button if you want image you can add image if you want columns you can add columns and so on okay now once you have created your blog post at the right hand side you will see post click on that and uh, you can add a category for example this is uh, related to marketing category okay so i'll tap in marketing as a new category and remember this category is different from the course category that that was for courses this is for blog post so i'll tap in marketing click on add new category then for featured image you can add any image as your featured image maybe let's upload this image click on set featured image and click on publish so just like that you can create different blog post come back again now let's see how we can create different pages so we have created the home page we have to create few more pages we have to create the about page uh, blog page contact page instructors page all these pages so let's see how we can do that so for that click on pages at the left hand side now click on add new let's start with the about page so let's give it a title of about us and also this will be under template type in or select in elementor full width now click on publish again click on edit with elementor now obviously we are not going to use elementor again to redesign this whole thing because that will take a lot of time you have seen for the home page it took us quite a time so what we'll do is we'll i have just given you all the pages if you go to this media folder and pages folder about page contact page i have given you all these pages you can just import them on your website let's see how that is done so you can click on this option add template option this button now go to my templates and you will see this upload button okay click on import template select file open the pages folder select the about us template click on open click on enable and import and once it is imported you can go ahead and insert this thing uh, i'll do it later on first i'll just import all the other pages as well so go to contact page import this one then click on import template uh, let's select the course list page again click on import template uh, let's select the instructors page if if this page does not work for you if this import thing does not work for you there is one more option uh, from where you can import templates you can go back to your dashboard and over here you will see templates at the left hand side click on that and you can import your templates from here as well click on import template choose file and for example let's import the subscription option from here click on subscription so here as you can see subscription is also added so you can use this option as well if this does not work for you sometimes okay now let's say let's insert this about us template because we are creating our about us page and here as you can see we have the about page okay this is how it looks like click on update obviously if you want to do any changes you can just click on this text click on background all these things if you want to replace this image whatever you want to do we have seen all these things this is image box simple icon box this is simple image you can change the title and all okay so content is given to you just click on that thing and change the title again come back to your dashboard let's create our next page so click on pages add new let's create the contact us page so give it a title of contact or co contact us or contact me again change the page template to elementor full width and publish it click on edit with elementor now again click on add template go to my templates 
and import the contact us page template click on insert now here as you can see you have the contact page as well now if you want to change your phone number email address anything like that you can change it from here now this is the form uh, what in fact i would recommend you to do is delete this form now uh, open short code import this short code element drag and drop it over here now go back to your dashboard and click on contact at the left hand side you will see this contact form short code or uh, copy it come over here and paste in this short code okay you'll see your contact form update this page now your form looks a little bit different don't worry once we paste in the code css code it will look good in fact you can do one thing again open your website click on customize now go to media folder open this css file copy everything and you can paste in this css over here under additional css at the bottom press enter and you can paste in this code then if you again refresh this page uh, the design of this form will change now as you can see it looks a little bit different okay so this is your contact form and your contact page again come back to your dashboard uh, similarly you can create and import other pages let's create one more page let's see how we can create the instructors page let's give it a title of instructor or instructors change the page template to elementor full width publish it edit with elementor and after that uh, add template go to my templates okay and use the instructors option insert it in this case you just need to change or you just need to replace this image and change the title and all okay rest everything is good click on update now here you will see this button become an instructor we have to link this thing with one page so again click on pages one page will be created for you instructor registration if you open this page if you're already an instructor you will see con con congratulations you're an instructor but if you open this page in a new private window uh, there will be this form okay so if somebody wants to register or if they want to become an instructor they will have to fill in this form so i'll copy the link and i want to paste it under this thing okay under this button so whenever somebody clicks on this button they will be redirected to this instructor page so they can click on that button and they can become an instructor again come back to your dashboard so your pages are also complete and now let's do one thing let's create the menu so let's see how we can create this kind of menu for that again to create a new menu we'll hover over appearance and click on menus now we have to create multiple menus first is our main menu which is at top and then we have also have these three menus at the bottom in the footer so first let's create our main menu so i'll give it a title of main menu you can name it anything you want i'll name it main menu click on create menu now whatever pages you want so i want the home page about contact instructor registration maybe let's see instructors page student registration also maybe all right so whatever pages you want you can click on add to menu and we also need one custom link as i said earlier courses page is already created for you so you just enter the website link whatever your website link is after that put in forward slash courses okay so this will be your courses page and under title type in under link text okay where is that menu item uh url is fine under navigation thing under label type in courses okay now you can rearrange this thing now what i want is i want it like this i want to create a pages thing and in drop down i want to add all these links so for that again you can use custom link in the url type in hashtag basically it means no link and under link text we'll type in pages click on add to menu bring it over here now everything will be under pages okay like this using your mouse cursor you can do it and make sure to tick mark primary because this is our primary menu click on save menu now again if you come back to your website let's see here as you can see we have this menu over here we have this thing like this again come back to this page let's create one more menu Cre click on create a new menu and these will be we have to create three more menus actually for quick links resources support okay for your basically for your footer so i'll name it footer one click on create menu we don't have to tick mark anything at the bottom just select three four links that you want to display over here click on add to menu click on save menu this is your footer too similarly you can click on create a new menu create your footer you know multiple footer menus just like this okay now once you have created these menus now we can add these elements in the footer okay so let's see how we can do that come back to your dashboard again and over here you will see appearance under appearance click on widgets 
and under widgets you will see footer widget 1, 2, 3, 4. So under footer widget 1 we want to add this simple text. So I'll copy the text. Come over here, click on this plus button. Search for paragraph and paste in this text just like this. Alright. This is your footer 1. Now for footer 2 we want to add uh, this link. Footer menu that we created we want to add this menu. So click on footer widget 2. Click on plus button. Search for navigation menu. Okay. Select navigation menu. Give it any title. I'll give it a title of quick links. And under select menu, select footer 1. Okay. I'll do the same thing for footer 3 and 4. Navigation menu. Okay. Give it any title. For this, I'll give it a title of resources. And this is, again, I'll select footer 1 because I've created only one menu for footer. And over here as well, navigation. Title will be support or whatever title you want, obviously. Now, once you're done with this, you can go ahead and click on update. Again, if you come back to your website and refresh it, let's actually go back to the home page. Let's see at the bottom. Now, this might happen like this, uh, or you, you might see all your footers in one single column. This is because of one simple uh, problem in the, co in the code. So if you right click over here, click on inspect. And if you click on this option, you can see uh, here, if you see this thing, uh, media thing, it should be maximum width, not, not minimum width 480. So there is one problem. I hope the theme developer fixes it. So you don't have to do anything. We just have to change this thing. Instead of minimum width, we have to make it maximum width. So what I'll do is I'll copy this thing, minimum width, come back to this website. Now under appearance, you'll click on theme file editor. Click on this theme file editor. Click on I understand. Now do only that much that I'm showing you. Okay. Don't do anything extra over here. Click on assets from right hand side. Click on dist CSS. Uh, and over here, you'll see the style CSS. Click on style.css. Now click on this file. Just click inside this file. Now press control F, F for find and paste in this thing or just type in minimum hyphen width colon. Press enter. You'll see wherever this code is uh, used. So again, keep on pressing enter till you see uh, this one. Okay, till you see this one, add media, minimum width 480. This is line 1183. If you want, you can just go to line 1183. You will see this thing. Add media, minimum width 480. So instead of minimum width, we just have to change this thing to max width. Okay, only this much. Don't do anything extra. Instead of min, type in max. Okay, this is the only thing that you need to do. Click on update file. Once you do this thing, then you have to go to this next file, style.min.css. Click on this. Same thing. Uh, this time, press enter. Uh, just, uh, just click anywhere on this screen and press control F. Now, again, type in this same thing, minimum width, colon. Okay. Now, here again, you will see this thing. Scroll down till you see minimum width 480. Okay. Uh, let's scroll down. Okay, here it is. As you can see, minimum width 480. Again, just change this thing to max width 480. Okay, nothing else. Just change this minimum to max. Click on update file. But if you still come over here and refresh this page, it will still look same because of this caching, so because of browser caching. But if you open this website in a new private window, let's open this in a new incognito window, it will be fixed. Here, as you can see, this is looking so much better. So uh, what is happening right now is your browser caches this thing to, uh, you know, your browser basically saves the cache file to make your website faster, load faster. So if you, if you want to see this changes on your website, you'll have to clear your browser cache, then you can see the changes. But if you want to see whether this is working properly or not, you can even open your website in a new private window and you can see that this is working properly. All right. Again, come back to this thing. So this footer is also completed. Now the final customization is left. Like we need to uh, you know, add our logo over here. We need to add the search bar and so on. So for that, you can click on this customize link at top. Now let's start from the header. So click on tutor starter and select header. Now what header style you want, you can select that thing. I want this header style with search bar. So I can select this header style. Now we have this search bar as well. We also have this button. We don't want this button actually. Alright, so let, let this button be over here. If you want, you can change the link this of this button. You can link it with some other page if you want. Then we have this logo thing. You can upload your logo over here. So let me actually upload my logo. Media folder, you have this logo. I'll maybe upload this Twitter, uh, Twitter logo. 
Okay, this is, uh, I think this is the SVG file. Let's try it again. So you cannot upload the SVG file, I guess. First, let me see what logo I'm using over here. Okay, I'm using this one, the dark logo, the colored logo. So come over here, let's upload the colored logo. Here it is. Open this, click on select, skip cropping. Now under retina logo, you have to upload the same logo, but a little bit size, a little bit bigger in size, basically twice the size. So if this logo is maybe 50 by 100, then this will be 100 by 200. Okay. Now under retina logo, upload the same logo, but a bigger size. Open, choose file. Now you can publish it. Okay. So we have seen the header. Now come back again. Now select the blog. If you open your blog page, where is that blog page? We did not add. Okay, we, do, we have not created the blog page actually. Let's create the blog page as well. Click on pages. Now click on add new and let's give it a title of blog. Don't, don't need to select any template, anything. Just publish this page. Now we have to set this page as a blog page, just like we set the home page. So you can do one thing, click on appearance or click on settings, reading. And under post page, select the blog page and click on save changes. And now let's add this thing in the menu as well. So appearance menus and select the blog page, click on add to menu. Okay. Not this menu actually first select the main menu, click on select leave. Now select the blog page and add to menu. Maybe we have to add this menu in the main blog page in the main menu, click on save menu. Again, if you come back to customize, refresh this page. Now let's open the blog page. This is how your uh, blog page looks like. If you open a single blog post, I think everything is looking good. So we don't have to do any changes over here. Now let's see the footer. So again, Twitter starter, select uh, footer and select your footer logo. So you will be uploading white color logo in the footer, you know, Twitter white. I'll upload this logo. Click on choose image. Okay. This logo will display at the very top like this. Here also you can upload your retina logo if you want. All right. Click on publish. You can control what type of layout you want for this footer. You can control that thing and rest. Everything I think looks good. Again, come back to your dashboard. Now let me show you the instructor part, how somebody can come to your website. They can sign up as an instructor, create their course. And once their course, uh, once they receive any sales for their course, they will get 80% or 90%, whatever commission you have set for that and rest 10% will come to you. So for, for that, what I'll do is I'll open this website in a new private window so that we can create a new account or you can go to pages and you can select instructor registration. Maybe let me register as an instructor. Okay. Let me select some username, some email, all right, some password. All right. Click on register as instructor. Okay. Your application is sent. If you go click on go to dashboard, you already have this thing. So your application is pending first, you, this admin of this website will have to approve you as an instructor. So if you go back to your dashboard, let me show you how you can approve somebody as an instructor. Now under tutor LMS, you will see uh, instructor option, click on instructors. And here, as you can see this pending, this request is pending by Nayar Sheikh. So you can approve this request if you want. Okay. And you can also change commission rate for individual instructors if you want. Again, if you come back to this page and refresh it, you can see now that thing is gone. And now this instructor can create a course. So if they click on create a new course, now they will follow this whole process, the same process. Okay. They will add the course title. Okay. We have seen this thing in complete detail, so we won't be seeing it again, but I'm just showing you, they will select the category. Uh, they will upload some featured image maybe. Okay. Let me upload some featured image from here. Well, let's upload this image, click on set featured image. If they want to make it paid, they will have to select a product for that. So they can select any product or basically they will request you first. They will have to create a free course. Then once they have completed this entire process, like they have added the course builder and everything, they have added all the details. And if they want to make it a paid course, they can contact you obviously through the contact form or through whatever mean you want. Now, once they, once they have, a, once they contact you, you can create a product for that and you can link this course with that product. Okay. And after that, they can click on submit for review once they have completed this course. Now you'll have to see this review. If you click on courses under tutorial LMS, you can see this is pending a new course. If you can click on this course, you can see whether this person Okay. So first time you come over here, they will ask you to take over. Uh, so yes, we want to take over this thing. 
but we we don't want to become the instructor okay the instructor or the author will be nayar shake or the new user nayar triple seven if you remember the new user that i just created so make sure you don't change the author or or else you as an admin will become the author so you can basically see okay everything is looking good okay they have added everything properly um you know course intro and everything is added now if you see okay whatever price they want you can create a product for that and you can link this thing with that thing and after that you can publish it okay so you as an admin only can you publish the product this user can create the course but they can send you this course for submit for review so they can submit this course for review you will have to go through the course and you only you have the power to publish this course okay now if this user will go to courses my courses they will see they have uploaded this course this is still free because we have not linked it with any product now once this pro person has created this course and whenever they uh, there is any sale of this course this person will go to withdrawal they can see that they have some amount in their uh, in their wallet and if they want to withdraw this amount they can click on withdraw preference and they can select how they want to withdraw it if they want to withdraw through bank transfer this user or this instructor will add their account name account number bank account name all these things and after that this uh, you you can send them this money if they if this user or if this instructor wants to withdraw the money through paypal they can go to paypal enter the paypal email address all right now click on save withdrawal account now whenever this person has any amount uh, any money in their wallet in their withdrawal up option they can submit a request for withdrawal for example let's go to withdrawal maybe i have uh, like 500 dollars i can i'll get, once i have 500 dollars i'll get, get a button over here so request withdrawal once this instructor clicks on that button you will get a request over here so under tutor lms you will see that request under withdrawal request click on that and you will see that withdrawal request all the details as you can see withdrawal method withdrawal details amount status everything will be available to you so whatever the uh, amount is you can just transfer this amount to the instructor remember again i am saying whenever a person or a student purchases a course whoever the instructor is whether you are the instructor you as an admin or owner of the website or some other person is the instructor whenever a customer purchases the course the amount the money is received in your account the admin's account or the owner of the website's account you will keep your 80% or 90% and you will uh, you know submit or you will just transfer the rest 10% or 20% to the instructor so this is all the details related to the instructor will be available for you instructor withdrawal method withdrawal details amount whatever amount you have to you know send to this instructor you can uh, just send this money and after that you can change the status to completed okay so this is how this thing works this is how the instructor thing works and with this we have 100% completed this tutorial now i hope you guys find this tutorial helpful i hope you have learned something new now if you find this tutorial helpful and if you want to watch more tutorials like this one make sure to subscribe and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss any future notifications if you like this video give a thumbs up to this video share it with your friends on facebook twitter whatsapp whatever social media platform you use and throughout the video if you have any doubts any comments any suggestions for me you can always leave them in the comment section below and finally thank you so much for watching this video see you in the next one